Woodward Sports. Love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids, all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. Watching the Detroit Red Wings game last hey. night, <laughs> Mr. Brad Holmes. He's also excited that it is nine days away from the NFL draft right here in the city in Detroit, Michigan. It's going to be a great time. Welcome to Wake Up Wilbur. Thank you guys for choosing to kick off your day with the crew. We got the whole entire starting five here today, and I'm excited. It's appropriate as well. It's very appropriate mm. <laughs> with the big Detroit Red Wings win last night. Man, I started off so sad. You talk about a swing of emotions to, like, waking up the baby, waking a wifey, man. Oh, my gosh, man. What a win. It was... Woo! arguably the most exciting moment in the history of Little Caesars Arena. I, I mean, I, I know it seems a little bit prisoner of the moment, but not a lot of good, um, not a lot of good NBA basketball or NHL <laughs> hockey has happened at that arena yet. But uh, man, that was just, we're, we're, we're going to get into it a little bit more and I'm not going to get too high because uh, the job is certainly not finished, but man, what a win. Just hey. pulling victory out of the jaws of defeat when it looked hopeless. It was just the range of emotions made it to where I don't even know how I got any sleep last night. I was so <laughs> amped. I got a little bit. Hey, Flannel hit us with the Kobe Bryant, man. Job yep. finished? I don't think so. Job's not finished. Job's not finished. Job's not finished. Hey, what up, though, Mr. Matthew Broder? What up, fellas? What up, though? What up, fellas? What up, Seth Boyd? Yeah. 499. One more win. Come on, Wings. Get the job done today. Y'all have come too far to lose LGRW. I'm having a fantastic morning. I'm excited to talk Wings, Tigers, Lions. I know there's some stuff coming out of LCA on that other team, the yeah. Pistons, but I'm pumped to be here with you guys. Yep. Yeah, and with those Pistons, <clears throat> we'll, we'll probably talk on some of this stuff briefly, but obviously tomorrow's Wilbur Pistons Wednesday. We got Rod Beard that will be on tomorrow, and we're yes. going to break a lot of this down, a lot of this down. I got the opportunity to be at the exit interviews. Listen, my first couple years, um, we got to talk to Mr. Troy Weaver yesterday. We didn't get that opportunity. It was just a few of the players – that are um, noted that we believe are going to be either back or, uh, or at least that is the uh, that's that's kind of what the the, the precipice is. That hey, these are the players that we're looking at moving forward with. Obviously, the draft and free agency can change things, uh, but it was an interesting time. And Kay Cunningham, Jaden Ivy, Jalen Duran, even Asar Thompson to hear these guys kind of talk. Jalen Duran, uh, it, it's it's reassuring at least that the young players like Simone Fantecchio, Hey, I love Detroit. It was reassuring to kind of hear what those guys' mindset is and that it's all steeped in. We have to do better individually in our workouts. We got to get this chemistry right. So at least from the ground level, we know that those guys got their head in the right place. Now we just got to make sure that the front office does too, and we'll get more into that tomorrow. It's man. time to channel the inner Lucas Raymond. Yeah. That dude is a star. Woo. Oh, yeah. Star. I can't wait. And, and shout out to our elite booth, man. We got Detroit's number one draft pick, Mr. KG what up, the sound though? booth. What up, though? Hey, what up? Hey, this a Tuesday. And so you guys already <laughs> know. In the thinning booth, we got Wilbur Sports' MVP, Mr. JB Smooth, decked out with the Lions gear. Man, I, I, is that what? Two or three different logos you got on there? All it of them except for the two. slinky it's dog? Two. You know, we got the Lions right here. You got the Lions on the hat as well, too. So Let's go. Just two for the day. Uh, are you excited for the NFL draft? Am huh? I excited? Come on. I'm more excited than that lit up Detroit sign that I just seen. <laughs> yes, it has lights now, everybody. It has lights. Oh, goodness. Mr. Matthew Broder, man. You want to tell the people what we're talking about today? Yeah, we're talking a lot of Red Wings and a lot of Lions. We'll touch on the Tigers right here and around the city. But we want to talk. Uh, I, I, they, they released the schedule, and we're going to use the Amazon Prime uh, graphic. Release the Lions schedule, and... I, I know Flannel and I have some comments on it. I'm, I'm interested to see what everyone thinks 
of how difficult this Detroit Lions 2024 schedule actually is. More of the 2023 team and their uh, AI. I, I forget which AI it was, but they predicted some things about Aiden Hutchinson Jeez. going into next year. And that's going to kick off our conversation around edge rushers in this draft because that's a target, what many of us think is the target of the Lions, target of Brad Holmes on one of the three nights of the draft. So that's going to be the majority of the show today. Like you said, we're talking a lot of Pistons tomorrow with Rod Beard when he's on uh, so we can get his perspective. But today, man, those Red Wings, those yeah. Lions. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to go heavy Red Wings, heavy Lions, man. We have to. Um, hey, let's get around the city then. The let's Tigers, man, they lose 1-0 to Texas at Comerica. Man, Broder. Tell us about these Detroit Tigers. Oh, it, it was a, there was no energy at all in that game yesterday. I, I don't know if it was because it was a long weekend or whatever, but that offense, <laughs> that offense uh, uh, showed up how we expected, which is doing absolutely nothing. At, they had five hits on the day. I know Michael Lorenzen, former Tiger, he pitched pretty well, but they only mustered out five win, or excuse me, five hits. They had five walks too. Like this is becoming the wrong lob city, the left on base city. These, <laughs> these guys keep getting on base, That's but there's weird. no one to drive them in. It's really frustrating. But I absolutely loved watching Reese Olson pitch. He had his his uh, his slider and changeup mix going. It was nasty. It was some of the nastiest off speed pitches that I've seen out of Reese. Hit 96 on his fastball. I, I mean, he went out. What was it? He it was. Uh, he only gave up one run, one earned run. Yep. Eight strikeouts, one walk. I thought he was fantastic. So that's the good I take out of the game, that offense. Well, that's that's the that, that that's uh, the story. I don't want to take away anything from what Reese Olsen did because seeing him six and a third, one earned run, that's obviously a fantastic outing. And then you had Tyler Holton get, get two thirds, no earned runs. Alex Fayedo, somebody who to me has been a little bit of a pleasant surprise, yeah. acclimating to a role that maybe fits him a little bit better in the bullpen, gave up uh, no runs in two innings. But the problem is, is that these are the Texas Rangers. When you have an opportunity, when you allow only one run to the Rangers, you got to win that game mm -hmm. because you never yeah. know if today's the day where the lineup wakes up a little bit. Corey Seager might be in the lineup. I mean, the Tigers benefited from him not being there, and they pitched well, and they only allowed one run to the Rangers. But as you said, Broder, the, the, the uh, Tigers hit into three double plays. They had eight men left on base, and they were 0 for 8 with runners in scoring position. That cannot happen. And I understand the Tigers. They've uh, they've had some games where they've maybe, pulling, they maybe pulled a uh, – victory from the jaws of defeat but that doesn't th that's how they're going to have to win some of these games and the fact that they couldn't even get one run the fact that they, they couldn't have one of their patented late inning rallies hopefully it doesn't hurt them because you definitely don't want this to be a series where all of your season momentum is basically halted halted to it to a standstill you still got to get that split and yeah. last night would have been that would have been really really nice Man, that unfortunately, nice. they didn't get it. And, and it's the way we said that these Detroit Tigers, if they are going to win, if they're going to compete in this AL Central, we believe that their relief pitching, their starting yeah. pitching was going to give them an opportunity to have timely hits and situational hitting and small ball and money ball. Those types of things be what helps them get these W's. But we've seen them early on in the season already kind of be in those types of situations. And they've come through in some of these games. Yeah. They have failed in some of these games. They still sit above 500. But, uh, Fredo, I didn't get to ask you, man. You know, I know that a lot of us are waiting for that first month of the season to go through so we have more of a sample yeah. size. But how are you still feeling about these Detroit Tigers and their expectations in the AL Central? I mean, the expectation for me is still to win the AL Central. However, right. am I worried about some of the uh, slow starts? Absolutely. I mean, at this point in the season, I mean, Colt Keith is hitting under 200, even though he's, he's, he's done some uh, positive things. Spencer Torkelson ain't hitting yet. Parker Meadows is unplayable. Jake Rogers is unplayable. We all know that Javi Baez is unplayable. Yeah. The reality is, and I'm not even trying to be Debbie Downer because I thought that this offense would actually be better than people expected, is that for the majority of the season, for I would say well above 80% of the innings, the Tigers' offense has looked dormant. They've relied on some very nicely timed late-inning rallies, which I give them a lot of credit for. They've relied on a couple of big extra inning innings as well after not doing much for a lot of the, for a, a lot of the game. And one game in particular being shut out through nine and getting, 10, get, get, getting five in the 10th inning. It's just, so far, the bats just haven't been there. I mean, Riley Green, Mark Canna have, have been all right. You see Gio Urshela and Matt Vreeling doing some things, but... Uh, I guess if you want to look at one positive, it's that the bullpen looks dominant. 
all of the starting pitching, even Ken and Maeda had a good outing recently. They've all shown some flashes, and despite the lineup not producing for the most part, they're still above 500. I don't think that Spencer Torkelson is going to finish this season at the average where he is without a home run. Obviously, he's going to heat up. I think Riley Green's going to heat up more. With Parker Meadows at some point, it's either heat up or go to the minors. Mm-hmm. At some point, you got to have that, that, uh, that, uh, you, you got, you, that, that has to be the uh, conversation. It's just yeah. right now, they're fortunate to be above 500, but with the Rangers at playing three more at Comerica Park, they're in danger of maybe halting all of the progress and not having a successful April, but they can't let that happen. They can't. They can't. And my question to you baseball aficionados is this. At what point in time are you concerned with the bats? Now? Yeah. Now? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's getting there. So, so it's not a situation where you're waiting, you, you believe, you know what, yeah. this thing's going to heat up. Like, at what point in time with these big bats are you like, you know what, this is a problem? This is a problem. This is going to affect us it, all we, season. We can't get to the middle of May and it still looks like this. Um, I, like you said, a month is a, is a pretty solid sample size. Um, we still got a lot to go, but they have a lot to figure out in these next few weeks. Trying to get this offense on track. But, I mean, it seems like everything else is falling into place. They have a good bullpen. Defensively, they've been okay. But it's just they have to figure it out at the plate. And that's probably going to be the hardest part of, of figuring out this young team this season. Man. Man, yeah. Oh man, oh yeah. Man. yeah, and I guess if I'm worried about anybody in particular, it's probably Spencer Torkelson because credit where I've just spent a lot of time, you know, down down criticizing the uh, Tigers hitting. But when you look at Riley Green, even when you look at Kerry Carpenter, they're getting off to decent starts. It's just Spencer Torkelson, the one thing about him that I worry about, and I know a lot of people might think this is too preemptive, at no time in his MLB career, not at any moment where he's been up in the big leagues, has he had a good on-base percentage. Not once, including this year. And mm-hmm. that, to me, is what I'm worried about, where conversely, Riley Green and Kerry Carpenter both finished last season with a pretty good on-base percentage, and they both have good on-base percentages to start this season. Spencer Torkelson's got to get it together, because mm-hmm. if he doesn't become that, uh, at the very least, that... Uh, like what he was last year, plus a better yeah. on base percentage. This team won't go where they're supposed to go. It, it feels like the Detroit Tigers are in a position right now where they are assessing what yeah. they have. I think, like we said before, before you go out there and you spend that money on a big bat or bring somebody in, see what you got with these guys, man. See if, if, if Torque is that guy. See if, you know, Green and some of these other players, see if they are those guys that you can depend on uh, for a full season. I do believe that, and I'm hoping that this is the last season they go without addressing bringing in some big bats because, like KG said, you look at the whole rest of the team and everything is starting to come together. And based on what we hope they can depend on expectations-wise, we believe that some of these bats are the ones. But I believe that this team is in a spot right now that a lot of us believe, with the AL Central being kind of down right now, this is the time to strike. This is the time to strike. The AL Central is looking a little bit more battle tested and tough than I, I i originally gave them credit for but obviously that's why you play the games hey we shall see he, yeah. you, you can never count on you can never have as your strategy count on your division being terrible we all expected it to be that <laughs> way but we've seen cleveland and kansas city play better than we ex- maybe have hotter starts than we expected they might fall down to earth a little bit but you just never know that's why you got to go out and uh, play the games hey well hopefully these bats man hopefully yeah. they can work it out Yep. Hopefully they can work it out. <laughs> hey, but I know where we, where where I, where any of you can get the best workout, and that of course is Planet Fitness. Oh. Planet Fitness is home nice of the judgment-free know. zone, where anyone, and we mean anyone, can feel comfortable and work on their fitness goals. At Planet Fitness, you'll experience a squeaky clean gym that has tons of equipment, a full body workout in just 30 minutes, and all memberships include fitness training. You get all of this for only ten dollars a month, no commitment. No matter where you are, there's a Planet Fitness close by. There are more than 50 in Metro Detroit and thousands more throughout the world. It's Planet Fitness, where your fitness is essential. Essential. Buying your first Feldman Chevrolet is much more than buying the car that will get you from point A to point B. It's a place for first memories. Some big, some small. As she grows, you're not just buying her a Chevy. You're buying into a Feldman family. 
with more than 700,000 vehicles sold from generation to generation. Feldman just keeps rolling. Is that an octopus in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> Is it, see what I did there? Go Red Wings! From Octopi Experts Woodward Sports. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness! Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. The new glorious ice water bubble hash pre-roll now has diamonds in it, everybody. Look, they are constantly pushing to create the best cannabis experience just for you. The perfect boost comes from the added touch of pure THC diamond dust, allowing flowers with only the highest terps, making the best even better. Glorious Cannabis, check them out at your local retailer or always check them out online at GloriousCanna.com. Glorious. <laughs> <laughs> Yo! Only appropriate. How do we get final to do this? <laughs> hey, y'all getting out of control, though. I know that. <laughs> Let's go, man. Let's go. <laughs> what up, though, people? Welcome back to Wake Up Woodward. The sun is shining. It's feeling like a really, really, really good day. It's, this could have been a um, this could have been a much more sad day today. But the Detroit oh, Red Wings, yeah. they have kept their season alive. They have kept the playoff push hopes alive. It's down to one game. Oh, yes. And a little bit of help from around the NHL. And a little bit of help, unfortunately. And I have to get this out of the way because uh, we're we're <laughs> all very happy right now and we're all on a high. We all didn't sleep much last night, but, but it, it doesn't matter because it was arguably the most electrifying moment in Little Caesars Arena history. Even if the Red Wings win tonight, they do need a loss from Washington or <sighs> else because if Washington wins and the Red Wings are in, Washington will win, will it get in via tiebreaker. Even if the Red Wings lose in overtime and the Capitals lose, if the Penguins win their last game, the Penguins get in. So the Red Wings, unfortunately, do not have do not have any, I would say, of the tiebreakers in their favor. So there's still work to be done. This all doesn't mean as much if they can't validate it with a win at Montreal because that's the position where that, that they're in, that this poor stretch of that this poor stretch of hockey since the last game of, Fe of February, including even until now, has left you in. However, however, last night was fucking awesome. Hey, well, last that's night was fucking hear. awesome. That's and I'll tell you what, what and it wasn't just that it was awesome, it was cathartic in a lot of ways. Because I'll tell you what, in Kool-Aid, we were having this discussion before the show. Yeah. When the when uh, Simon Evanson tried to uh, clear the puck, and I believe it, it, it went off a skate and went straight to Montreal in the Detroit zone, and they scored to make it 4-1, to one, and then you saw Simon Evanson be visibly frustrated. He even slammed his stick against the goalpost. I'm yeah. like, it's over. There is no I'm chance. So sad, and I was... <laughs> I was I was sad. I was angry. I was thinking about man. I really don't want to have to do this show tomorrow and just uh, and, and just. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm always going to do the show. But believe it or not, even if you don't believe me, I want to be positive. I don't want to be negative. But if they would have lost that game, it would have given me no choice. However, the way that the Red Wings were able to rally man. off of and, and here's where and here's where I'm 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 encouraged because. When this team is playing well, when they've been playing well throughout the season, their offense, their goal scoring is actually really good. It's been top 10 in the league despite this stretch where it hasn't been as good. And they've relied on the stars. They've relied on the, on the depth pieces. And, and both of those sets of players came through in last night's game. I first got to give a shout out to Do a it. guy who Do I, I – he's, he's later. He's later. I got to give another one to, to a guy who – was struggling for a little bit, but really stepped up last night. How about JT Comfer? Mm -hmm. When the score was a 2 0 in, in, in the first period, JT Comfer got the goal to make it 2 1, stopped the bleeding a little bit. Same with in the sec in the, at the end of the second period. After Montreal got that goal to go, go uh, ahead 4 1, I was watching it yeah. on, t on TV. It looked like LCA was just pretty much a funeral at that point. <laughs> 
It, it, it seemed as though you could hear a pin drop, but to the credit of JT Comfer, he was able to get a goal less than a minute after after the uh, the, the Canadian scored to make it four to one, to make it four to two. That at least made you feel like okay, it's not over yet. Cut it to two heading into the second period. So I got to give credit to him. Also, when it comes to uh, depth pieces, I got to give credit to David Perron. He had a couple assists. He has four points in the last three games. Got to give him credit as well. And also Shane Gostaspier. Yes. He, hey. He had three assists, and he also had one of the one of the most aesthetically pleasing and also maybe underappreciated great play of the night. When at the end of the game, when the when the Red Wings were down by one with about a minute and a half or so left to go, they had obviously pulled the goal pulled the goaltender, and the Canadians. It looked like they were about to clear the puck from their zone, but Gostaspier jumps up from his skate, bats it down, keeps it in the zone, which eventually leads to the Lucas Raymond equalizing goal. That was a hell of a play. That was a, how do you get that much air off of a skate? But you know what? <laughs> when you needed it, Ghost came through. And Ghost came through with three assists. And by the way, shout out to him as well. He's going to lead this team in assists this season, even though he's had some struggles. Shout out. That's why, as I've said, the depth pieces, they haven't always come through in this stretch, but... A couple of them are coming through big when it matters the most. Yeah. But then I have to go to the stars. Alex Debrinkit, <laughs> you know what? You know what? Cat, 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 hey. cat. I was, <laughs> and I want to <laughs> I wanna make this very clear because people are going to accuse me of flip-flopping. I was wrong. I didn't think the Red Wings were, 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 were going to be able to do it, especially after they lost to Pittsburgh. I didn't think that Alex Debrinkit was going to be able to turn it around after he had that tough stretch, which started with him at, at, at Pittsburgh, by the way, but he did. And the, he, had, he had a couple of goals in the last three games, seven points. That's phenomenal. That's more than uh, two per game. And it's also, he's, he's, he's uh, partially undoing the stretch where he wasn't so good with the stretch that he's having right now. And that's kind of all I asked from him. And he's doing it right now in credit where credit is due. But the most credit from last night and the most credit from this season, at least when it comes to the Red Wings and why they've been, why they've improved so much is none other than the wonderful, immaculate, stupendous Lucas Raymond. <laughs> Lucas Raymond with a, with a tying goal. Is at he going to walk in here today now? Hey, <laughs> oh my God. I would probably... <laughs> Hey, they're on they're 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 on the way to Montreal. Hopefully he does hopefully he doesn't come into here. But yeah, just the wonderful, stupendous, immaculate Lucas Raymond. What a season he has had, what a game he has had. And I always give him credit to him because even when the Red Wings weren't playing so well, Lucas Raymond continued to play at a high level and he has had a hell of a season. He had the the uh, goal with about a minute twenty three left in regulation to tie it, and then the game winning goal in overtime. And I'll tell you what, Lucas Raymond, another one. And the last three games and in these last three games the Red Wings are 2-0 and 1 by the way a really really big stretch including a big point at Pittsburgh which looks a lot bigger now yeah. Lucas Raymond has had five <laughs> goals and seven points in the last three games in the last five when the Red Wings are 3-1 and 1 which included that big win against Buffalo Lucas Raymond has six points six goals in five games and ten points in five games and by the way Lucas Raymond with those two goals now has his first 30 goal season if you want to look at whether the Red Wings make the playoffs or not, and I don't want to have this discussion yet. I want to have that discussion tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the thing that you can be most excited about from this season is that Lucas Raymond looks like somebody who could end up being that 40-goal scorer, who could end up being that, I don't, I don't even know if I want to say superstar, but possibly that star player, that guy who's a point a game, the guy who's a perennial all-star, because he's, he's really young. I believe he's only 21 years old, and he's already doing this, and he had a breakout season. He's set the expectations I have for him or what I believe his ceiling can be. He's raised that exponentially this season. So shout-out to the Red Wings. Shout-out to Lucas Raymond. Shout-out to uh, Debrinket, Comfer, Perron, Gostaspier, and I got to also shout-out Kane and Larkin for their phenomenal seasons as well. They did enough last night. As I said, job is certainly not finished. Got to go into Montreal and win tonight. And even if you do, you might not make the playoffs. However, that's not, that's not for right now. Right now is to celebrate this win, which they needed in the worst way, and they got it. Being, after being down 4-1, to one, phenomenal. Yeah. Shout out the Red Wings. Lucas Shout Raymond, out the Red Wings. He, he just turned 22, by the way. Just like, turned 22. Like okay. Two weeks ago, okay, just yeah, turned yeah, 22. Yeah. He's, he's fantastic. He covered everything there. That's Shane Gostasphere play to keep, yep. the, keep the puck in the zone with what was a little over a minute left. Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you, and, and we spent time, 
like working out and close to the the Michigan hockey team when I was there. And I always wondered, like, why are hockey players doing plyometrics, like doing jumping exercises? I get it now. Like, that was as big of a play in the game as any. And then that Larkin pass to win it uh, to Lucas Raymond, the yep. little saucer oh, yeah. sort of leading Raymond to set him up for that goal. Mm-hmm. Like, like that was special to me. Not just, just being unselfish, but how perfect and precise that saucer pass was. Man, it was so much fun watching the end of that game. You guys covered it. The, the emotions were all over the place, Bro, man. It, it was so, so much fun that we were before the show watching it up here on the screen. Mm-hmm. And when that goal went in, Lucas Raymond, top shelf, it was just like a whole jolt of energy as if I had just seen it for the first time all over again. Man. It was, oh, my goodness, Red Wings. Oh, and, yeah. But you know what? Uh, there's one thing I do want to point out. I know that the expectation is for them to be able to make the playoffs. And we've all sat on this show and said if they don't make the playoffs, it is a disappointment, especially with kind of the cushion they had. I do want to put a little bit of an asterisk with Dylan Larkin's injury. Who knew that between Dylan Larkin and the patch that these things would affect the Detroit Red Wings so much? But when you look at the juxtaposition of the Detroit Red Wings and their rebuild versus the other three teams who have been going through some pretty long-term rebuilds and the Pistons and the Tigers as well, The promise and the expectation for the Pistons to start their season was that they were going to play 82 meaningful games. The Detroit Red Wings are actually playing 82 meaningful games, and they are on the cusp and on the doorsteps of getting into the playoffs if they can handle business. They lost their ability to kind of control their own destiny, which is something that going into next season, you want to see this team have that figured out. Control your own destiny. Whether they're firmly in the top six spots or still in the wild card, that's the next evolution for this team. I will accept playing 82 meaningful games right now, but down the stretch, obviously dropping that one to the Capitals, how how huge that was. How how big of a game in a negative light was that for them? But I I do want to make sure that I tip my cap, especially covering the Pistons all season. (laughs) You start with the expectations, and you're like, you know what? Let's see this thing. Get 28, 29 wins. You're playing people tough. Let's rock. We will accept that. These wings, they've actually done that. And I do got to tip my cap to them in that regard. Yeah, no, you, you most certainly have to tip their tip your cap for the way that they've responded in these last couple of games. You could even say three with the way they were able to get a point at Pittsburgh. However, even if the Red Wings don't make the playoffs, I'm still going to look at this as a failure of, 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 of a season. And maybe I would say put some heat on a certain couple of people. Not firing anybody, maybe Lalonde, but I'll, I'll hey, yeah. hey, maybe Lalonde, but I will, give, that quick. I will yeah. give the Red Wings credit because one of the yeah. things that I was worried about when it comes to Lalonde is that he seemed to be a little bit soft. The way that he was, be, like in his interviews, I'm kind of like, oh my God, this, yes, sound, this, this sounds like a guy who... Uh, We've exceeded preseason expectations. They, right, right. Like, this sounds like a guy who uh, like, just, just, we're just, just maybe isn't, yeah. isn't, isn't who they need. However, well, the, didn't say that. However, the way that, that the Red Wings anyway. were able to respond in the Toronto game after Toronto had tied the game and able to keep Toronto scoreless in the third period in overtime, that leads me to believe that the Red Wings didn't quit when they could have, when they could have gone, here we go again. And of course, last night, the way that the Red Wings responded when they were down four to one to the Canadians and ended up winning, those to me are a couple of positive, Ooh. positive notches, even in the Derek Lalone belt, who I had kind of been a little off on before. However, as I was saying, as I was saying, the Red Wings, even though last night was great, even though the Toronto win was great, man, a couple of uh, really cool, exciting games. If they don't make the playoffs, here's the reality especially if the Capitals are the team that prevents them from getting into the playoffs. Here's what I'm going to look at. I'm going to look at the last two times you played the Capitals, Mm. you lost both of them. They got four points, you got one. Mm. And that's going to be the difference. However, I hope it doesn't come to that, and I don't want to say anything now that's going to make everything moot tomorrow if the Red Wings can take care of business and the Flyers can help us out a little bit. We'll see. All I know is... I'm enjoying this one a lot, but we got to get right. <laughs> hey, they they got to get right back on the horse, go to Montreal, win again, and just another night of hopefully exhilaration, but a lot of nervous energy. I'll yeah. be. Oh my god! <laughs> how about oh, man. how about uh, um, how about that puss that hit the ice with four to two, a hey. four to two deficit? <laughs> Wait, what? The two octopus, <laughs> octopi. They hit the ice. What is kind of uh, kind of igniting what that, that comeback? Hit the ice, it was the, the the puss that hit the ice. It was thrown out <laughs> on the ice. Really ignited. I'm wondering what the score has to be tonight for another one to hit it in Montreal. 
What? We love you, brother. What? When that puss hit that ice, look, man. I know we can go to take those puss to get some food, bro. <laughs> it's not you Shake Shack. You take the puss to get food, the... and then put it on ice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to Premier Pet. Oh, my gosh. I love this crew. Give your pet the best at Premier Pet. It's hands down. Michigan's. <laughs> Michigan's best pet store. <laughs> Same prices and all the conveniences with the online and big box retailers with one major difference. It's family and locally owned for over 30 plus years. Over 60 brands of food, for <laughs> the puss, and nutri <laughs> nutrition experts to help you. Same day, local curbside and home delivery. Premier Pet Supply. Give your pet the best at www.premierpetsupply.com. Searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles. And with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today. Boys and Girls Clubs of Southeastern Michigan and the Jerome Bettis Bus Stops Here Foundation is proud to present the 3C Sports Conference to educate, inform, and inspire players, parents, and coaches in our local communities. Featuring impactful speakers like Jerome Bettis, Eddie George, and Adam Schefter. April 24th through the 26th. For more information and tickets, scan the QR code on the screen and sign up today. What up, though, people? Welcome back to Wake Up Woodward. Chat family, as always, you are a very important part of this Wake Up Woodward family. You guys are all a part of the Woo crew as well. Hey, Ryan's reaction. Broder, I sing the puss. Oh, my gosh. See what you started? See what, you, what an influence Broder has on the people, man. Do you think that there's going to be any road puss in Montreal tonight? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be some road puss if they win. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's on me, boys. That's on, actually, that's on me, ladies. Sorry. Tossing the strange <laughs> on the ice. Oh, Bro, there are some yeah. of you guys are freaking hilarious. Oh, man. Yo, smash that like button once you've done that. Encourage somebody else to do the same. This chat is always on one word to Eduardo O'Neill. Bro, it looks like we got a... Um, looks like we got a... Uh, a super chat as well. Burn! Burn! Burn, Burn says, hey, thanks for the $10 donation, Burn. We appreciate you so much, man. Uh, the Red Wings team, this Red Wings team feels like Dan Campbell's second year. I can live with missing the offs by one point because these last two weeks were virtually playoffs, but next year you have to make the playoffs. Oh, well, yeah, that's... Again, yeah. I'm not firing Steve Eiserman if the Red Wings don't make the playoffs. I, I, I just... I think if they don't, it's a failure. However, if they don't in year six, and this is another conversation for another day, they, they're still very alive to make it this year, that's when I think even some of, the, uh, some of the bots will maybe say, okay, now it's taken a little bit too long. Although some won't. Some won't if it's 15 years and I will die on that hill. I will die on that hill. That some people, even if it takes 10 years, will be like, gotta trust Stevie, eyes are playing 1919, but... I'll leave the snark for if they actually don't make the playoffs. All right. Oh, All and, right. And, by, and by the way, I have to shout this out as well. Didn't mean to interrupt. Um, I saw in the chat. I forgot who it was. I wish I would have. I wish I, 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 would, I would be able to locate it. Given Mo Sider his flowers. Oh, because yeah. mm. for last night in a game in which your team gives up four goals and had to score five to win, I'm obviously going to highlight the offense more than the defense. But Mo Sider this season, second in the NHL in block shots with 213. Hey, you could be seeing a Norris trophy in that guy's future. Raymond and Cider, if, if you take nothing else from the season, and there's obviously more to take away than just that, it looks like Mo Cider and Lucas Raymond are building blocks and potential stars. So uh, shout out to the Red Wings. Hopefully they can get it done tonight. 
Ooh, for all of our sakes, man. For all of our sakes. And, and like we said as well, they're going to need some help. They can play a fabulous game. Yeah. And honestly, when you look back at those Capitals games that they dropped in the stretch without Dylan Larkin, those are going to be kind of the two things to me, the thorn in their side. They yeah. were firmly in place. They were two or three points away from uh, one of those top six seeds. So it's going to be, it's going to be yeah. an interesting thing, man, especially if they win, but they still don't get in. I can't wait to see your reaction. So you guys, make sure you tune in tomorrow as well. Yeah. But uh, we got to talk the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions, this home and away matchups, their official schedule hasn't been released, but at least who they're going to be playing in this next year has been released already. We got to go through and predict this record because it may be a little bit more tough than what people give it credit for. Oh, yeah. Or it might be as tough as some people think it is. Yeah, before before we predict the record, like, yes, sir. looking at this, is it safe to say there's no there's no gimmies? Like, like, like I, I'm, I'm interested to see what Arizona and the Titans do in this draft, but, like, if we think the NFC North is going to be as good as we think it is, this is a pretty difficult schedule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, like fortunately, we get to play the 49ers and the Texans. and the uh, Actually, those are away. <laughs> the Texans yeah. and the 49ers and the Cowboys are all away. The Colts, um, we get the Rams back at home. We get the Bills at home. But, man, I, I don't see many areas. And, and no, no game in the NFL is a gimme. And, and maybe the Cardinals are the easiest game on the schedule. But yeah, I see at least 16 games that are going to be battles. Oh, yeah. I mean, when, when I looked at the schedule, so they play eight games against playoff teams from last year. They got two against the Packers, the Cowboys, the Texans, the Niners, the Bills, the Bucks, and the Rams. When you look at the Rams, though, they are losing Aaron Donald, which is, which is huge. He, he, uh, he wasn't what he was in his prime last year, but still, that's a big loss. And then the Bills, you know, they had to uh, get under the cap, so they lost Stephon Diggs, Gabe Davis, Jordan Poyer, Leonard Floyd, yes. Tredavious White. I know, like... They lost a lot of a lot of players. So those games, those might be two teams that maybe take a little bit of a step back, although I'm not so sure. But yeah, you, you look at two. Home against the Jags. The Jags are a team that you could maybe see bouncing back and making the playoffs, although the Texans look a lot better too. But yay, speaking of the Texans, look who the Lions have to go play on the road. They got to mm -hmm. play at San Francisco. At Dallas is going to be tough. Mm -hmm. The division... None of the division games are gimmies. Even at Indianapolis, they may have made the playoffs if Anthony Richardson was healthy the whole year. They may have. And then, yeah, the, the uh, Cardinals, there really aren't a ton, of, uh, a, a ton of gimmies. But it all starts with the fact that the NFC North, I think we think, is going to be better. The Green Bay Packers, they've already shown you that they can make a playoff run, that they could win a road playoff game. So we shall see. It certainly, I would say... The, I could see the Lions actually being a better team, which I believe that they will, but maybe having the same record or maybe be an 11-6. And, and there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. It's just uh, it's a tough schedule. It, when we looked at last year's schedule, we began, a lot of people thought this is a very winnable schedule yeah. for the Detroit Lions. As the season went on, we started to realize, yo, the NFC North could actually get three playoff teams in. The Vikings <laughs> were one Lions game away from being able to make the playoffs last season. And as that year went on, we started realizing you know, there are some tough games on the schedule yeah. to the point that there were people who were worried about what's going to happen in the Chargers game. There were some people. I, I don't know if many people worried about the Raiders. We absolutely dismantled them, and they wound up yeah. making changes and things. So there were, as the season played out, a couple gimmies. But as the season actually was, when you look at, like, the Seattle Seahawks, that wasn't a gimme. When you look at the Baltimore Ravens, we no none of us thought that that was going to be a gimme. Mm -hmm. When we looked at the, the Cowboys last year, none of us believed that that game was going to be a, a gimme, even – with how well the Detroit Lions had played leading into that game, there were a lot of us who were like, well, now we get to be able to see if they're a real team or not. And they went into Dallas. They went into Jerry World. They handled business. Obviously, we know how that game ended. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, we remember how that game ended. But when I looked at who the Lions were throughout that entire game, I saw a team that's for real, not a team that we have to worry about when the schedules get released and we see these types of teams on it. I saw a team that... When we're on other people's schedules, I don't believe that they're just going, oh, you know what, that's just the Lions. That's a win. That's a gimme. I believe that this, this Detroit Lions team, like you said, Sam, they're going to be better than last season. You look at the additions they have to be able to kind of shore up and be able to add even more power to their elite yeah. unit, uh, the offensive line, the run stopping, the pass rushing. They went and they did that. And then you talk about adding help on the defensive side in the backfield. They went and they added that, and they still have a draft to be able to go 
and try and fine tune exactly what they want, whether it be for depth, whether it be for players that they believe are going to start or make an impact right away. They have that opportunity to go and make themselves even more formidable. So when I look at this thing, it's not a schedule where I'm like, you know what? Yeah, the Lions are just going to go out there and, and put up 12, 13, 14 wins. They may, they may not. But it's a, it's a schedule in which I look and I say, you know what? It's indicative of the fact that the Lions, they are now big dogs as well. These, these are the types of schedules that you look at and you say, you know what? It's just time to go and do work. And I do believe yeah. they're going to. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's the NFL. Everybody's yeah. schedule is difficult to uh, some extent. Although this one, this one, there's certainly a lot of uh, tough games. I mean, you even, you even look, look, look at their road schedule. No road game is really a yeah, gimme. But even, no. really but, but even though I look at Arizona, then I just yeah. look at a ton of tough road games. If you were to say maybe any gimme, it would be home against Tennessee. But again, you just, you just never know. The thing that I also noticed when I looked at, at, at the schedule is I think especially with what happened with Cam Sutton, and hell, it might have even been this way with Cam Sutton still there, but certainly with him out. The secondary, it's looked at as a unit where maybe in the draft, maybe even later on in free agency, the Lions need to upgrade even more. Maybe it's a little bit of a, still a weakness of the team. I'm not sure if it will be, but I can see why you'd think that way. Yeah. They're going to get tested. You know, they, they play the Rams, Puka Nakua, Seattle, DK Metcalf, the Titans, DeAndre Hopkins, Tampa, Mike Evans, Houston, Nico Collins, and Stephon Diggs, Dallas, CD Lamb, 49ers, Brandon Ayuk, yep. maybe. maybe. Yeah. Debo Samuel, you got Indy with Michael Pittman, the Bears, DJ Moore and Keenan Allen, and the Vikings, Justin Jefferson. Again, maybe, but... The, the secondary will be tested. We'll see what the, the, we'll, they'll have to <laughs> yeah. show us what they're made of uh, pretty much from day one and continue yep. to keep showing us throughout and, the whole season. And, bro, hey, look, I do want to throw that phone number out there. Word to Eduardo on there. I'll see you in the chat. Phone lines are 31. Uh, the number is 313 552 6322. Once again, the phone lines are open 313 552 6322. And for the love of all that is good in Detroit, please beat the Seahawks. Please. Yes. They, we Please. owe them one. We definitely owe them Please one. Please beat the C, especially for them coming into the city. And we know CJGJ kind of spearheaded a lot of this stuff. But it was not just a dunk on CJGJ. It was a dunk on all the fans as well that went and they bought into some type of hype to galvanize the fans. And my number two, for the love of everything that's good in Detroit, beat a mobile quarterback. Beat a mobile quarterback. Those are two things that I believe will help really push this Lions team to the next level. Yeah. We saw this squad, and when we talk about some of their weaknesses, everybody said, hey, look, as long as they're not playing outside in, in bad conditions, yeah. or as long as they're not playing a mobile quarterback, the Lions are going to be pretty good. That offense is tough to stop. That Detroit Lions offense is tough to stop unless they're playing in Chicago in the cold and in the wind. These are some things that I'm hoping, as it related to what we saw last year, if they can help to kind of shore some of these things up, this team is going to be so tough. It's good, KG. Yeah, uh, real quick, what do you think is the uh, the hardest game on the schedule? To me, it's the Texans. Listen, logic, yeah. On paper right Logic now. says that. As it relates to the Lions, the Seahawks, <laughs> they just can't oh. seem to figure them out, dog. But, yeah, logically, that Texans game looks like it's going to be the one. They, yeah. they went and absolutely loaded up in the offseason, yeah. and they still got a draft to go. That Texans game is looking tough. Yeah, that's uh, Texans. You look at the at 49ers. Hell, even I would say, and I know that the Lions have had success in Lambeau recently, going into Lambeau and, and uh, playing a Packers team, which is expected to also compete for the division. That's going to be, that's certainly going to be tough as well. It's just, there are a lot of really good teams out there, and uh, the Lions, they're going to have to earn whatever they get. You always do in the NFL because, you know, everybody drives Mercedes, as, as Neil Rule says. But <laughs> there's, there's a unique challenge with this Lions team, which I think they, uh, don't, they didn't necessarily have for all of, of, of last season. And I even want to respond to, like, Randy Smalley in, in the chat really quick before I pass it over to uh, Broder. He mentioned when I was talking about how the Lions secondary is going to get tested, just kind of saying like, wow, every secondary is, is going to get tested. Breaking news. However, however, we can all agree that the cornerback play last year and the secondary play, par partially due to injury, was not good. And Cam Sutton's gone. You got a new, new guys in Carlton Davis and Amik Robertson. We don't necessarily know what we have in those guys. You kind of think you do because Carlton Davis is somewhat proven and so is Amik Robertson. It's just, we'll see how they all gel. The reality is, is that 
their secondary was one of their weaknesses. It's not a weakness of all 32 NFL teams. That was my point, Randy. And Steve DeYoung was real quick. He said, beefing up the D-line, cough, cough, pass rush, <laughs> helps contain mobile quarterbacks. We hope. Yes. We hope, man. There are some things that just seem to be kryptonites yeah. that uh, just they, they go above whatever logic would absolutely say. Like the Seattle Seahawks beat them. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Aaron Glenn figured this thing out because they love playing your defense. Figure it out. It's good, brother. I, I see 12 out of 17 games that include a mobile quarterback. It looks like Darnold, Baker on the Bucks, uh, Stafford, and uh, well, yeah, Dar- Darnold twice, and maybe Will Levis, who's got a little bit of a little bit of white boy wiggle. Uh, so they they have their <laughs> they they have this schedule is not going to be easy. I, I they're they're in the position now where they should beat all these teams, or, or you know they, they should be the better team out there. Uh, San Francisco is a f- fantastic team. There are a lot of good teams. They should go expect to win these games. But when we were looking at the schedule last year, we could, even with the Lions just reaching that sort of upward trajectory, we could almost not guarantee a win. But when, when the, the the Bears, we thought they were going to sweep there. There were Falcons, Panthers, the Saints, the Bucks. They were all on the calendar. Uh, last season, we just thought hey, the Lions should be like those are almost give me or, or some of those games that allowed us to pick a, a twelve and five record or a thirteen and four record. This is going to be grueling. I, I think they have us based on regular season uh, records in twenty twenty three. Eduardo shared this with me. They have the eleventh hardest strength of schedule in the NFL. The Packers have the fourth, mm. so there is still competition mm. within the division. It's not like it's going to be easy for the other teams, but there's now going to be a battle in the NFC North six times a year. Maybe not the Vikings this year, although they always find a way to su- surprise some to people say. both ways. Yeah. Sometimes they overplay, sometimes they underplay. So it's polarizing, man. I just I, I was so excited to talk about this because as good as the Lions are improving, this has potential to be a grueling schedule. Yep. Yeah, uh, but I believe it's going to have them very, very battle-tested. Uh, that end of the season for the Detroit Lions where the Vikings always seem to play them tough, no matter what, no matter what they have, no matter who their quarterback is. I don't even, I don't even like, like when Cousins would get hurt, I wasn't ever, not last year, not any other year, like, oh, you know what? Hey, this is going to be an easy game for the Lions because for whatever reason, the Vikings always seem to have their number to play up to the level of competition uh, as it relates to the Detroit Lions. But, yeah, this isn't going to be an easy schedule. I don't think it should be. I believe that this is one that's going to prepare them. I think it's one that's going to push them. I think it's one that when they look at it and, we, and when we talk about having these Super Bowl aspirations that you don't, this doesn't give you an opportunity to look too far ahead in the mm. future. This right here is a meal where you're like, you know what? I actually do want these appetizers. I actually do want these sides to be able to complement the main dish. I'm, let me, I'm going to push back a little bit. I'm going to push on you a little bit because I think go. they need to have used last season as their preparation. Like Steve Wilde said, they can beat any of these teams. The Lions are the big dog. They need to channel what they learned in that San Francisco game, what they learned in the playoffs, yeah. to go out and use that as the appetizer. I, they have to come out right from week one and play like the big dogs. Yep. Like, I, I don't think there's any time. we can't. They don't have any time, any wiggle room. To, to, to ease into the season. Yeah. We don't know who's going to be week one. Very well, it could be the Texans yeah. at 425. So Ooh. they better come ready to play. Last season needs to be that test. With with Dan Campbell, everything we've said to pump this team up, Dan Campbell's their coach, Penny Sewell, Amorase Brett, like this toughness, this is where they prove it now even more. They got to go be the big dogs. They are the big dogs. We think, we say, they say, now it's time to go do work. Yeah, yeah sure. and, I, and I agree 100% with that. That was effectively the point I was yeah, I was trying to make as well is that when you look at this schedule, I hope that this isn't anything that any player on this roster is looking beyond. And with the coaches like Dan Campbell and Cole on this roster, on this on this team, I don't think that they are. You want to talk about having Super Bowl aspirations and what they did last year. This team has been calling their shots since this organization has put these guys at the helm in terms of Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell. They've been calling the shots. And you know how you do that? By being well prepared. You do that by yeah, being well studied. You. Think you do that by not taking anybody line, for so granted on this schedule later. at all. You do this by understanding that being one of the big dogs means every single game is a fight. If you're not coming away with every single one of these games, whether you win or you lose, like he said, biting the kneecaps, man. We remember, we remember the entire diatribe, so I ain't going to repeat everything that he said that they was taking chunks out of and biting and all that type of stuff. But that's the type of mentality they have to have. Broder said it spot on. 
spot on. And I don't want them to necessarily have this aspect of sulk, like, well, we have to get back to 49ers. No, 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 no. You guys had that game in hand. Understand who you are and take that into every single one of your games starting week one of the regular season. Yep, and the good news is all these other teams that have to play the Lions, they're probably thinking, man, this game, this game, especially if they have to come to Detroit, that's going to be a tough one, especially with their interdivision opponents like the Bears, Packers, Vikings are probably like, oh, damn, we're going we're gonna to be in for a dogfight playing the Lions twice a year. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's, that, that, that's Broder's point. That's your point. The Lions are as much of a big dog as anybody in the, NV, in the NFC other than San Francisco. So, uh it's it's the same for everybody else. They're probably like, oh shit, we got to play the Lions. Yeah, yeah, especially understanding their relentlessness. We saw teams and yeah. players uh, complaining about them, <laughs> from Matthew Stafford to yeah. a couple people here in the NFC North. Yeah, I think that that oh it's on tape. We seen the footage and blah blah blah, all that type of stuff. These players are gonna have to think about that when they step on any field with sure. the Detroit Lions, and I'm hoping they continue to keep that up, man. And if they do, the Lions will have an amazing season. They will have a very, very awesome season. I can tell you guys about something else awesome, too. It's when a guy can be a guy and get an amazing haircut. That's Lady Jane's haircuts for men. Stop in, sit back, and relax, and let one of Lady Jane's talented hairstylists make you look and feel great. Walk in any time. It's Lady Jane's. It is wicked awesome. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Woodward Sports love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends, impress your boss, impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. BGCSM 3C Sports Conference is coming during NFL Draft Week, starting on April 24th. Special guests will include Jerome Bettis, Barry Sanders, Eddie George, Aleem McNeil, Calvin Johnson Jr., Sean H. Wilson, Cynthia Freeland, Adam Scheffner, and more. This event is open to athletes, coaches, and parents, but space is limited. So go to our website and purchase your tickets today at www.bgcsm.org. We don't like to brag that we are the toughest sports network in Detroit. But we do have a guy named Darren McCarty on our side. Woodward Sports. Woodward Sports has your Detroit sports coverage all day long. You know the Woo Crew in the morning, woo 8 to woo. 10. You know what it is, man. But woo right woo after woo that, woo. you got the golden voice of Neil Rule and Red Wings legend Darren McCarty on Big D Energy every day, 11 to 1. Then you got Braylon Edwards and Armani and Maz on Armani and Edwards with Maz every day, two to four, and finish your night off with the heavyweights. Five to seven every day. Spin more racks and easy. You know they bringing that heat. Where were sports is your Detroit Sports Network all day long on air and social media. What up, though, people? Hey, hey, hey look, man, we got Broder Ball. Hey. There's a reason why he's out of his seat right now. But what up, though, people? Welcome back to Wake Up Woodward. Thank you guys for kicking off your day with the Woo Crew. Wake Up Woodward, man. Smash that like button if you already have. Encourage somebody else to do the same. We got brother up here on this Vanna White, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because we got special <laughs> guys who just showed up. Hey, pride hey. of inks to Mr. What's Energy. We got up, Devin fellas? the dog. Yeah. Let's go, man. Yo, Let's what's up, go. gang? Hey, man, listen, as always, we're about the people. We're about the people. Anytime we get an opportunity to be able to feature you all, it's awesome, man. Thank you for stopping in Absolutely. today. Absolutely. I appreciate you guys letting me come in, man. This last minute, I was driving down Woolworth. I was like, hey, let me see if Broder's in a group chat and see if he could see if I'm uh, about five minutes away. Let's see, drop off, see, say hello to the guys for a quick second, man. Yeah. Up, hey. So pumped you did. And we definitely want to hear because you've been teasing in the, yes. in the group chat. Yes. You got something yes. going down downtown Fahrenheit 313. 
Yes. Would love to learn more about. Let's let's uh, promote what you got. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now, <clears throat> I'm be going down to Fahrenheit 313. Uh, I've been working with them for the past couple years doing their back to back. They had all stuff around the city. They do a lot of stuff for the kids, man. They've been featured on Fox 2 News. They're in the uh, Detroit History Museum now. Mm. Um, it's a Fred. He's one guy that's running with his family. It's all family owned, man. They open up the doors. I went there just spending money as a customer, and they open up the doors for me, man. It's a big shout out to them. But right now, I'm pretty much working on my graphic design and my uh, company, 51. I'm going to be doing a pop up uh, next week. I had sent uh, Kool Aid a little sample of what the shirt was supposed to look like. So, uh, but I got my last season's uh, the King of the North hoodie that I had made for the, all of Detroit. Yeah. Oh, that's nasty. Yeah. yeah. Show that off, man. It's the return of the king. This year, it actually going to mean something because we are returned of the king. Yeah. Right. Let's go. <sighs> oh, yeah. Let's but go. The, the new design I'm cooking up, man, that's that's going to shock Detroit, man. I, I'm, I'm going to put Detroit on watch, man. I, I'm tired. I, I love the Santa Detroits. I love uh, Detroit versus everybody, but... We, we need a big three. Uh, even Talk though it's just shit. me. But <laughs> <laughs> you fuck yeah. the big three, but it's just me. But uh no nah, man, I appreciate you guys, man. I've been listening to you guys for about three years. Man, just growing with you guys. It went from Adam yelling at me every day to Sam yelling at me every day. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like watching KG come in the booth, watching JB evolve yeah. the way he was, watching you evolve Kool-Aid and Broder. Appreciate man, you. what were nights was my jam, hey, man. Like shout all, all right, uh, man, all you guys just watching you guys grow up, man, and seeing everything become it's it's inspirational because like I'm your age, I'm twenty nine. I may not look at, you know, black don't crack by B. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> but uh, talk about it. <laughs> but it, it, it's inspirational for all, all the young guys around, around the city, man. Like, seeing y'all, it's some familiar faces. Even my dad said it when he was at opening day. He was excited. Flannel, you made his damn day. <laughs> but 30 minutes straight, that man was like, who is that guy? I was like... Dad, you watch. He was like, "All right, I have to wake up early enough to watch this." He was like, "All right." He's been stuck on Monty Edwards because you know he's a Michigan guy. Go nothing, blue, baby! You can't tell him nothing about his Michigan gang, but man, he changed his mind. He watching more than uh, Wake Up Woodward now hey, because of Flannel, hey, man. Hey, hey, shout out, man. But, hey. yeah, uh, besides that, man, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, man. I, I always got shirts for you guys when they drop. Yeah. You know, you go get the exclusive ones. I got exclusive ones for all you guys based on Ooh. your baseball. Based on Bro. your love for Michigan, based yeah. on JV love for wrestling, KG love for all Detroit sports. Thank I got you. Kool-Aid. I even got a Pistons one for you, man. You know what? I, you Ooh. know, I, I got I got some heat dropping, man. I've been working on this for over a decade, man, since I've been in high school. Yeah. Trying to get it off the ground. But this year just feels like the year to get everything taken off. And yeah. it started with you guys, honestly. So I, I appreciate it. All the love that you guys have shown me. Appreciate you too, I, man. I appreciate. Yeah. I'll be rocking the the shirt and everything. We rocked Absolutely. it on the show a couple I, times. I, I know appreciate, we get man. I'm gonna get all we'll y'all shirts out, so ain't gonna be no mess ups after the day. I don't gotta <laughs> I get them to ask nobody some stuff. Man. That means a lot, man. I know Paul Thomas and some others in the chat have wondered, like, where can they go to support you? Um, follow you, support you, whatever's the best. Right route. now on Instagram, Fifty One Clothing hashtag Fifty One Clothing. Anything you can find it all around yeah. uh, Google, uh, YouTube. Uh, <clears throat> I want to say uh, Twitter. I don't know if I still have my Twitter up. I, after it became X, I kind of just said about that. But <laughs> right. I still got my Instagram up. And I got my Facebook page. Um, I'm relaunching the website. It's under construction right now because it's going through a full revamp. Like I, oh. from the ground up all the way uh, uh, to the production and everything. I got finally all the things to set in motion that need to be set. But uh, I want to talk about some sports, man. Before before I leave, the Lions. If anybody ever realized, go back and watch the tape all last season, which you looked at where Cam Sutton was on the Pittsburgh's offense, I mean def uh, defense, he had ran a five-second uh, defense. So their plays will only go for five seconds. Our plays will go up to 10 seconds. Yeah. Ooh, that 10 second, that five-second differential exposed him. Yeah. And when you think about it, it exposed you think, a lot of, yeah, it exposed a lot of, a lot of everybody. You think about it, Brad Holmes had that envision that we were going to have that de defensive line that can mirror Pittsburgh. Well, plot twist, Bucks didn't show up. Half the defensive line didn't show up. And the only person that showed up for probably a good six weeks was Aiden Hutchinson. So it exposed Cam Sutton from where he was. And that's why I'm excited to see what our defense is going to be this year because 
our defensive timing is going to be shorter, hopefully extremely shorter, and hopefully we draft somebody that can help Hutch on the opposite side. Because I don't want to go at Flannel next season saying, get <laughs> Hutch some help. What's right? the excuse, Flannel? And get J-Mo the balls. We know this. I, 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 I'd say 13 and 4, honestly. Mm. Okay. Eduardo O'Neill says Sam is seething. What am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> because we got Devin the dog in the house. I'm happy. Let's go. Yeah. And I don't know if he knew it, and he might have a future in this industry because he just provided like the greatest transition in history. Because yeah. we're about to talk about Aiden Hutchinson and edge rushers hey. and what this Lions team needs to do to not only support him, possibly en route to a defensive player of the year award, Absolutely. according to ChatGPT, I think it was, slash the 33rd team. And then who do you put on the opposite side? Are they going to stick with Davenport in Houston, or do they address it in the first round? I think yeah. Davenport is going to probably be our third third down guy, honestly. Yeah. If, you, if you really think about it, it's how we use uh, McNeil right now, how we use uh, Jackson. They're going to be our heavy third down guys, the third and short, the guys that could come around the edge and knock, and knock the quarterback, that can stop those runs. We're already good enough with the run game. But if you add that and you add Davenport and then you add DJ Ritter in the center, mm. that's mm-hmm. sexy, man. That, <laughs> man, I, I, I'm, hey. I'm more excited than anything because I've been watching Lions since I was a kid. I got Barry Sanders hat, beanie that my granddad got me and made sure I wasn't Green Bay Packers fan like my dad was. What a man. A what a great right? man. Man, and uh, I've, been, I've been stuck on this train, so it's a long time coming, man. I'm 29. I'm trying to see a damn Super Bowl before I have it. <laughs> Tell me about it. This is like, oh. it's your golden NFL draft. You're 29. Bro, we got pick number 29. I'm be down there, man. It's golden, man. I'm bring all the energy all year yeah. round, man. I'm be calling in. I'm make sure I stay on top of everything, man. I'm getting better with the sports. Last time I was on, I forgot a little stuff. I was a little starstruck on the heavies. So I got it straight this time. I had to get it straight this time. But I appreciate you guys. Y'all have a great day, man. It's time for me to go gig, sell well, some nuts. Well, real quick, real quick, work. real quick, real quick, because you got the King of the North. You yep. got the King of the North edition of, of Lions coming out. I know they still got the draft ahead. Yep. But what do you think these Detroit Lions are going to do? We just went through their schedule. What you think Looking they're doing the schedule, this year? I want to say 13 and 4. Okay, 13 that's confident. Four. I have a year. That's wow. confident. I, I, one reason why I say 13 and 4 is because you already know Ca- Cowboys are going to be on some BS. <laughs> it's going to – we're – I, I don't want to play into the NFL script, but you already know the L.A. Rams game is going to be the crybaby game of the season. Everybody's tearing, showing Matthew Stafford videos. <laughs> give him – then it's going to be, oh, can he throw the long ball to Puka Nakua. Oh, scratch that. He threw an interception in the game, like always, on every Sunday. <laughs> and that's not – Ooh, I'm over. Oh, you're good. You're good. That's, right, cool. you know, uh, but, yeah, you're uh, good. Honestly, uh, <laughs> looking at the state of everywhere else around the NFL, Tampa might give us a little knock. Davis might have something to prove from last season with the playoffs. He didn't really perform as well. We kind of locked him down, honestly. Uh – Vikings, you never know. Vikings, it, it could always be. You never know we, with them. It's, we could split it. We could split it. It's just like Green Bay, or it might be Chicago's year. I don't. I don't, don't want to. I hate saying that. <laughs> How about this though? Chicago. Last question for you. Since you are twenty nine, yeah, and they pick at twenty nine, what are you doing in the first round of the NFL draft? If you're Brad Holmes, moving up to twelve, baby. Yeah, Come on. for who? Yeah, for who? who? For who Ooh, offensive line, Ooh, honestly, or okay. um. The best player available. I I don't have a best person at pick right now because okay. it's, they're all over the board. They, every day they're moving, man. It's like one nice thing could change a person like twenty spots. It's like, oh, yeah. he was a great person in class in math class. <laughs> yeah. Up thirty spots. And it's like, oh man, I don't, <laughs> messing up my draft boards, man. But uh, nah, right now. Best player available. And it's Brad we trust, man. You Let's see go. the little Yachty videos? We got to trust Brad. Let's, yeah. Let's go, man. Go. Devin the dog, you are the man. Thanks appreciate so much you guys. for being here. appreciate you. Let's go. I'll, I'll get that website for me when uh, uh, when we go to break here, and I'll put Let's it in the go. chat. But, hey, thanks for stopping by. Absolutely. Hey, appreciate yeah. you guys. This yeah. was good news. Yeah. This oh, was good news. This oh, was. I can tell you about a little bit of bad news, man. Tell them, Kool-Aid. Ah, the insurance rates have gone up in the state of Michigan, man. But you know what? Swiss Insurance is here to help. With the first pick in the 2024 Drive Detroit Picks, Swiss Insurance Group, Woodward Sports, and Detroit's top pick for your insurance needs. What up, though, brother? <laughs> Keep your current provider honest and price out Swiss today. Go to SwissINS.com or call Mark today at 313-530-1698. Shout out to Flannel Sam again. 
313-530-1698. Hi, my diamonds. It's Crystal with an X. You want to get hot and perfect like me? Here's my super easy routine. <laughs> Drink at least a gallon of water before you wake up. <laughs> Attach a weight to everything in your house. Hello? Sell your car and just sprint everywhere. Scream when you exhale. <laughs> Don't follow Crystal with an X. Do your own thing at Planet Fitness with tons of equipment and free fitness training in our clean and spacious clubs. Join now for just $10 a month and cancel anytime. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the off-season smells good. Woodward Sports. BGCSM 3C Sports Conference is coming during NFL Draft Week, starting on April 24th. Special guests will include Jerome Bettis, Barry Sanders, Eddie George, Aleem McNeil, Calvin Johnson Jr., Sean H. Wilson, Cynthia Freeland, Adam Scheffner, and more. This event is open to athletes, coaches, and parents, but space is limited. So go to our website and purchase your tickets today at www.bgcsm.org. Hey, you guys, I know you're tired of wearing that same old Detroit sports merch. Well, it is a new era in sports wearables with new designs, amazing apparel, and the ultimate swag. Look, go to WoodwardSports.com, click on that shop tab, get hooked up. You know we are dropping new designs every single week. As you can see right there, we got the Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell's election hoodies and t-shirts. They're on hats as well, too. We also got the Tiger sweatshirts, and we also got that damn Detroit sign. That shirt is going to be the death of me, I swear. But go to WoodwardSports.com, click on that shop tab, get swagged out. The draft is almost here, baby. Let's go, man. Yo, talk about Mr. Energy being in the building. Shout out to Devin the dog. Yep. Definitely glad to be able to have him on the show. Good good job spotting that too, brother, and uh, make sure he could find oh, his yeah. way and, and feel comfortable in here, man. That, awesome was, that was awesome, man. We got an awesome chat, family. Uh, I remember we had Chef's Talk on. Yeah. We were at the Planet Fitness. Uh, oh, yeah. We were, uh, as always, when we look at the fans and the, and the chats, uh, mock drafts and such, we want to do more. We're going to have to do some giveaways and such. Listen, we got the NFL draft right around the corner. We are going to be downtown. We want to see you all. We want to see you all. It's going to be epic. I got the call from Stig yesterday. I know from picks 21 to 32. I'm on the desk with the vet right here. Oh! Yeah! I can't wait. I okay. can't wait, boy. So that now, was bomb. part of me is like, hey, if you're going to trade up, keep it within 21 <laughs> to 28. So, but hey, no, look, man, I can't wait. NFL draft nine days away. I'm ecstatic. It's going to be electric. We're going to be down by the 10 roof at the Jars Cannabis draft party. Let's go. It's going to be a blast. Go. It's oh, yes, I'm going to be on with Chef Talks Lions. Tomorrow. Hey. Oh, we're, 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 filming. we're recording at 8 p.m. I think he's pushing it out a little later. But I'm joining Chef tomorrow. We're talking about edges and cornerbacks, which is a, a nice little tee up for what yeah. we're going to talk about now. Yes, we want to, I, I got to at least hear Flannel's uh, um, thoughts on Aiden Hutchinson, on, on AI predicting Aiden Hutchinson wins defensive player of the year, if that's a possibility. And then we all have a couple edges for you guys to look at to, to, Maybe do a little research of your own before the NFL draft. A couple guys, we have two apiece that the Lions may be targeting. So, Flam, I'm just going to tee it up to you. The 33rd team put out this graphic. They said that AI predicted Aiden Hutchinson, the edge of the Detroit Lions, to be Defensive Player of the Year for the 2024-25 season. Ah, uh, AI. Go. Hey. AI must be must be pretty smart. Here, and, and, and here, I know everybody's going to... in comparison to Flannel. Hey, I appreciate that. Everybody's going to... And I know I've got... There's a lot of people who really love Hutch as well, but none quite like I do, and people are going to accuse me of being a homer. But, however, 
I think it all sets up to where Aiden Hutchinson can at the very least have a defensive player of the year caliber season based off of what he did last year, but also based off of what this revamped defensive line, hopefully all healthy, can do for him as well. And the evidence I use for that is what DJ Reader did for Trey Hendrickson, which is the gauge that I always use for what Aiden Hutchinson's at least sack numbers could look like this season. Because even last year, the only reason Aiden Hutchinson did not get Defensive Player of the Year consideration was because his, uh, I wouldn't even say low sack numbers, but not exactly what you'd expect for a defensive player of the year because when it came to his pressures when it came to his hits when it came to pretty much everything else when it relates to pass rushing Aiden Hutchinson was near the top of the list and he absolutely cleared somebody like Trey Hendrickson who had less hits than him less pressures but he also had more sacks but he also got to play with uh, DJ Reader as well so what Aiden Hutchinson did last season, he had 11 and a half sacks, 33 quarterback hits, 101 pressures according to PFF, but according to a pro football reference, had 62. They just, they just grade him a little bit differently. He did all of that with no DJ Reader, with no Marcus Davenport, with for all intents and purposes says no James Houston and with uh, four games of missing a Lee McNeil. If he can get the adequate help for... The majority of the games this season, I think he's still going to be a force in, in rushing the passer, but I also think some of those pressures are going to turn into sacks. So I believe he will have a season in which he has similar production in terms of hits and pressures, but between 14 to 17 sacks. And hey, I think to me that's good enough for a defensive player of the year season. And oh, by the way, before I pass it off, Aiden Hutchinson did have more combined regular season and postseason sacks than Nick Bosa, Miles Garrett, and Micah Parsons. Combined? Just saying. Just saying. Combined? No, no, no. no. Oh, more, more than each of them. <laughs> more than each of them because uh, – Still. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nick – Miles Garrett and Micah Parsons didn't have a postseason sack, and uh, Nick Bosa, I believe, had two or three, but Nick Bosa actually had less regular season sacks than Aiden Hutchinson. So, yes – Aiden is certainly one of the favorites to win Defensive Player of the Year, both for what he's capable of and for the help around him, which I think will be drastically make his job easier. Yeah, and if we think, like we've been talking about, the Lions are going to continue to improve, yeah. and despite the tough set schedule, they should be ahead. Or, or we're, yeah. we're, if we say 13 and 4, we're expecting them to be ahead at the end of games, and if, or, or for most of the games. So if your opponent's team has to throw the ball, they have to try to play catch up. Mm. They're not running the ball as much, which, again, we have a, a, a top run defense. The more they throw the ball, the more Aiden Hutchinson gets to go heat yeah. sink. He gets oh, to yeah. go get that quarterback. Mm. So you hope that he just finishes those pressures, like you said. I'm with you. He certainly should be in the running. Uh, I, I expect him. I, I haven't come up with any predictions yet, but 14 sacks seems like a good floor. I mean, yeah. he was right there. He was so close. Uh, last season I expect him to take another step up and DJ Reader has a lot to do with that yeah I mean Miles Garrett had 14 last year and won it I'm not saying Aiden Hutchinson is Miles Garrett yet but I think by the end of this season he will be you will be talking about him as entering the tier with like the Bosa's and the Crosby's and the Watts and the Garrett's and and, and the Micah Parsons I think will it will include all of those guys plus Aiden Hutchinson and then everybody else that's what I predict yeah mm. and so we, we've seen Hutch take a Take a step forward, at least in his his NFL body, his his uh, being a professional. Like he his body has transformed. He's stronger. He's bigger. He's faster. The sacks didn't hit last year. The more you play, the more you're in the NFL. Last season, all of that experience it just only helps his pass rush moves. It helps his bag get deeper. He gets more comfortable mm -hmm. going against some of the best tackles, some of the best offensive linemen in the league. And and when we talk about prospects coming up, a lot of them. The, the biggest flaws are inexperience, their their lack of pass rush moves. Other than Latu Latu, who has a, a a veteran bag, most of them have to learn that stuff and yep. gain experience. Even Jonah Ellis out of Utah, who I'm going to talk about hey. in a little bit. Um, Aiden Hutchinson has been getting that experience. We see it with the Tigers. You want young guys to play, go through the struggles. I wouldn't even say Aiden Hutchinson struggled to be honest, but he went through the season and did get better. So seeing that progression now getting bigger and better and stronger in a third season, plus the experience with the pass rush moves. I think sky's the limit. Shout out Lil Wayne. Hey, sky's the limit. Yeah. With uh, Aiden Hutchinson, as well as some of the help that they've brought to this team and what they could add through this draft, I believe that there is other stats to his game that are going to improve even more so than just sacks. I know that that's kind of the big thing. People see the pressures out of Aiden Hutchinson. Mm -hmm. When you look at that first year, Aiden Hutchinson was all over the field, opportunistic, 
He was a guy that we went to every game wondering, is he going to get an interception? <laughs> you know, you, you, you look at the passes deflected. I believe that the way that this defensive line is constructed right now, it could roll the quarterback and roll opportunities his way to be able to be even more of an impact player as it relates to things like passes deflected. Uh, and honestly, like, it, it was a play in the, uh, in the Rams game where the coverage rolled towards him, and he got a pretty easy sack because all Stafford could do was just he kind of tripped, he fell. Yeah, but yeah. If he didn't, it looked like a play that Aiden Hutchinson was going to be able to make that sack anyway. I'm looking forward to Aiden Hutchinson just being one of those absolute game wreckers. Yeah. Game wreckers. I, regardless of what the sack numbers are, and I know that that's a big part of being a game wrecker, one of those guys that can kind of play wherever and however the Detroit Lions need him to in that moment. Yeah, and shoot, if he, if he can somehow get a couple of interceptions and maybe be near the top of the NFL lead in pass deflections, that could be that uh, tiebreaker type of stat that could lead him to winning Defensive Player of the Year. Because there's going to be the edge rusher position in the NFL right now, which is the, the position that I think will dominate the award for the foreseeable future. There's a lot of really good ones. I didn't even <laughs> mention a guy like Josh Allen, for, 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 for example, or a Daniil Hunter, or L. Trey Hendrickson again, although I think his numbers will dip with DJ Reader gone. You, you're going to have to uh, – you're going to have to have – I think he was a game record, record last season, but I can also see how if you're going to win Defensive Player of the Year, you have to put up more counting stats. I don't think it takes away from anything Aiden Hutchinson did, but for the purpose of this discussion, Chuck Brewer, we're just talking about his Defensive Player of the Year odds, not him impacting winning, because he certainly did that last year. But yeah. Mike Reed has a good point. If Hutch keeps getting interceptions, he can be our lockdown corner. Hey! He can be that guy we're missing. <laughs> Shout out oh, Mike Reed. Oh, man. Yeah. And, and because Aiden Hutchinson, is a, he's, a smart, he's a smart football player yes. to me. So it's going to be interesting to see next year. Uh, the first year he came in, I don't know how much defense or the offenses knew how or what to game plan for. The second year, now all of a sudden he's a guy getting all the attention, and mm -hmm. they spoke about that. He, now he's a guy not just getting double teamed, but triple teamed, um, you know, getting, getting uh, you know, the running backs and other players that are coming around to chip him and things of that nature. This third season, you talk about a guy who now understands what's going to happen to him in this league. Now he understands how much more to work, what to actually work on, and you got some help too. This could be a really big year for Aiden Hutchinson. What's good, JB? Well, no, I was just going to add something as well too. You know, I think he's on a different level as of right now because you know how you get new tattoos and you uh, – it started changing up a little bit. <laughs> you know he got this new tattoo, so oh, I think he's on hey. uh, on greatness mode soon yeah. enough when he hits the field this season. The so tattoo in the sleeve, I'm telling you, yeah. man. Yeah, especially when his arm raised out, it definitely looks gonna look. Hey, sweet, when he so. gets those interceptions, that tattoo is gonna look dope. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll I'll tell you what, I don't. It's a little bit corny-ish to me, but, but, oh, but, oh, here go the fun, however, please. however, go the fun, however, said however, however, if you're going to, thank you, J <laughs> thank you, KG, if you're going to get a tattoo and you want to maybe show off your uh, faith, that's about the best one that you could possibly do. Yeah. I'll hey, give him that. Hey. I'm just glad it was spelled right. There have been way no worse regrets. attacks. What an, no regrets. 100%. Yeah. 100%. what an argument from Sam, man. He sounds like a lawyer. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? Pants. You know who else is a lawyer? Figer is. Let's After an go. accident, people need to hire a lawyer more than any other time. So make Figer Law your first call. 1-800-A-WINNER. Their team of trial lawyers will get you the money you deserve. Figer Law. All we do is win. Come to any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week, walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore, it should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week, walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men, it's wicked awesome. Thank you to all the fans for making Woodward Sports your number one online destination for Detroit sports. We promise not to drop the ball. 
Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles, and with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today. Feldman Chevrolet, Detroit's number one Chevy dealer. Since 1996, Feldman Automotive has been driven to provide a fast, convenient, and first-class car buying experience called the Feldman Advantage. With 18 locations, there's a Feldman dealership in your backyard. Visit FeldmanAuto.com to find the location nearest you. Catch Woodward Sports Network live from Feldman Chevrolet of Novi every other Monday. What up, though, people? Welcome back. Hey, look at that Fire Law. All we do is win. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Wake Up Woodward Family Fire Law. I know we got a couple more uh, sponsors as well on the oh, way. Oh, yeah. Hey, Wilbur Sports, man. Doing good things right now. But doing good things. Down. Chat, fam. <laughs> bro. Hey, look, bro. Look, I wore the Street Fighter shirt today. I think it's so appropriate. I think it's so appropriate. Shout out to Ryu and Ken. Hey, who's your favorite Street Fighter character? You got it. It's Ken, bro. It's Ken. Come on, man. <laughs> Let's go. No offense to Ryu, but I mean, Ken is, <laughs> Ken is that guy. <laughs> Oh, man, chat family, thank you guys for choosing to kick off your morning with the Wake Up Woodward crew. Smash that like button when you have encouraged somebody else to do the same. And we got to talk about these edge rushers. Mr. Broder, man. Hey! I'm going to kick it over to you, our credentialed beat writer and reporter for the Detroit Lions. You will be in the building for the, the, the NFL draft in Detroit. I'm ecstatic for you. I'm pumped. I'm excited for you. It's well-deserved, and I can't wait. I can't wait for that night, brother. My dog, Khalid, always just, like, lifting you up. I'm a little you sad, know. though. I, mean, I, wish, I wish we were on the de on the desk for that pick together, but to know you're in the building, though. Yeah. I'll be remoting in with you guys. We're going to yeah. go live from inside the draft, live from on the red carpet. We got the jersey reveal coming up Thursday. Um, I will be there, but we got to talk about what, what we're going to do over the next – uh, what, what I really believe, every day Sam's on the show, so Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of each week, we're going to break down a different position group. Just come prepared with some of our uh, so, some players that aren't being talked about as much as possible fits to the Lions. Um, so today we're talking edge rushers on the Aiden Hutchinson topic. I asked them to bring two different edge rushers or someone you have in mind, not named Dallas Turner, Jared Verse, or Leatu Latu, that may be available to the Lions anywhere from 29 to the end of the draft. I'm gonna, I'll start and I'll be quick. I'm going to go with Jonah Ellis out of Utah. And I don't know if uh, all of you remember, his dad, Luther Ellis, played for the Detroit Lions mm -hmm. from, I believe it was 95, excuse me, 90. Uh, uh, he was a 20th overall pick for the Lions in 95, played till 2003. He was a pro bowler in 99 and 2000. And his son, Jonah, is an emerging prospect out of Utah. He's not the most insane athlete, but... He has a lot of things, a lot of characteristics about his game that seem to match what this Lions coaching staff is looking for. His motor is really his 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 prime attribute. Like he is as as intense. He I've heard some Aiden Hutchinson comps, not in his game Ooh. or his size or his athleticism, because he's not the best athlete. But in terms of his motor getting to the quarterback, it's special. He won the ten head Ted Hendricks Award for the nation's top defensive end. And how about this? The lot impact award. Award, Integrity, Maturity, Performance, Academics, Community, and Tenacity. Normally, we're talking about NFL draft. That's good stuff for a good human, but who really cares on the football field? <laughs> this Detroit Lions team, that's part of what they factor into it. So I wanted to point that out. He was a finalist for the Polynesian College Football Player of the Year. So there's some synergy there with Penny Sewell and some of the Polynesian players on the Lions. What I like, man, is I, I like picturing what he can do as he develops on the other side of Hutch. He may not be a three-down edge in the NFL now. He may move to more of an outside linebacker, but if he continues to develop with Terrell Williams, Jonah Ellis could be that three-down back maybe in a year or two. I have 40, 46, 45 seconds of a clip for Jonah Ellis. I don't know if you guys have seen him, uh, but he, he's got some pretty, impressive, uh, some pretty impressive film, and I tried to pull on the first clip uh, that goes up is someone that the Lions might be seeing twice a year moving forward. So, JB, whenever you get that clip, let it fly. I got you. Boom. Hey, let's go. So, as you can see, Caleb Williams is, uh, uh, is starting here with the ball. So, he's number 83. <laughs> face. There's a circle on most of these. And you can. I, I tried to pull a couple clips where you see his motor, you see his ability to uh, set an edge 
uh, I, I forget which one is coming. Maybe it's this. He sets the edge, goes and makes the tackle on the running back. You'll see his electric spin move. That may be his best pass rush move right here, going and get the mm. UCL court, UCLA quarterback. You'll nice. get it often. He's just one of these players, and, and Schiff God really turned me on to him in the chat a couple days ago, just as someone who can come into this culture, continue to develop, and fit opposite Aiden Hutchinson. Bro, if he keeps getting Man. better, like some of his explosion, he's just a smart football player. And I love he's got professional football DNA. He's got Lutherellas, who was his yeah. coach at Utah, too. I like the J.C. Horns. I like, uh, I, I like the Pat Sertans. I like when prospects come knowing what it is to be a professional football player. And his brother, Caden Ellis, is a starting linebacker for the Falcons and has turned into a pretty damn good middle linebacker. So yeah. there we go. There's my player, Jonah Ellis. Probably won't have time to talk about my second player, Austin Booker out of Kansas, but I think he's one you guys should look out for as well. Now, I was going to say, you know, kind of keeping this thing with some local flavor, you got Darius Robinson, who's from Southfield, Michigan, yep. and you also have Marshawn Nealon that went to Western Michigan, and uh, Darius Robinson from Mizzou. Uh, I, what I like about Darius Robinson is the fact that he could probably step in day one and be an impact player right away. And when you talk about Terrell Williams being here, what an underrated what an underrated addition to this coaching staff this year because you're talking about guys who probably need to be able to kind of – Learn this NFL, learn their finishing moves, learn the ability to get off, not just use your physicality, but to be able to have some moves to get home and get to the quarterback. That's the thing that I'm most grateful for. And if we get through this segment, because I know you got a couple of players that you want to mention as well, I want to be able to talk about two players that I think, if the Lions were to add them later in this draft, could absolutely be guys that Terrell Williams has an opportunity to coach up. But I want you guys' opinion as well on Darius Robinson and Marshawn Nealon. Hey, by the way, real quick, just while, while you said that, I was thinking – I, I forgot to mention Jonah Ellis projected as a, a late second to like fourth round draft pick, so not not a first round guy. And then Austin Booker, I mentioned, is more of a a, a third to fifth. His athleticism might bump him up a little bit, but these are mid round guys. Maybe available to you at sixty one, um, but mid round guys. But you were about to uh, give your comments on Darius. Oh yeah, I mean Darius Robinson to me. He's not somebody that I necessarily want at twenty nine. Although I wouldn't be mad a trade back into the second round and maybe nab him with like the mid forties. Yeah. I would certainly, I would, I would love that with Darius Robinson. I think the thing that you got to like about him is his, is his potential versatility. The, the fact that uh, he could come in and play on the defensive line, but he really starred as an edge rusher last year, which was his first real season as an edge rusher. So that to me tells me that he could still get even better. He could learn under guys like Aiden Hutchinson. He could take the uh, coaching from Terrell Williams and just play wherever he is slotted on this defensive line because there's going to be injuries. I'm assuming that there's going to be some backup players who maybe, I don't even want to say underperform, but are backups for a reason, and that's where a Darius Robinson could have fit on this team. As far as Marshawn Neyland, he's a, I, like, I, like, I like him a lot. He's another one who's... I would say counting numbers, like the guy I'm going to talk about later, won't yeah. blow you away, but in terms of all the pass rushing metrics and all of that and his film, he's a guy that could project to potentially be that book and edge rusher at some mm. point, somebody who could play every down. So uh, I don't hate him at all. I, I, don't, I would be okay if Brad Holmes takes either of those players, although I would say if they were to do so, either trade back or take with uh, the 61st overall pick, although Darius Robinson, I'm not sure he'll be there. Yeah, and who you, who are your players, man? All right, I'll, I'll I'll do what a Broder did and really kind of highlight <laughs> one and then briefly touch on the second one. My guy is a Chop Robinson to the sh to the to the shock of absolutely no one. <laughs> yeah, I, right. I feel that's like your, that's your pick, 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 pick. Right. I feel like I'm preach cheating flannel. a little a, a little bit because uh, he's a guy that I honestly believe has the upside to maybe even be the best edge rusher from this draft. And here's why I like Chop Robinson on this particular team. He is a guy who is an absolute athletic specimen. He's a freak. He's got all of the – he's just – he's that type of guy who, if you put him on a defensive line where there's, um, there's talent around him, yeah. you could maybe see his ceiling. And his ceiling is to be an actual star defensive end. Although, I do think he gets a little bit of a bad rap for being a guy who's just an athletic freak and has no pass rushing bag. And this is where you no, have to look at things like film and also some metrics that I love from a website called Pro Football Focus. <laughs> oh. You're going to listen whether you like it or not. Chop Robinson last season had a higher pass rush grade than both Jared Verse and Dallas Turner. 
He had a Chop Robinson had a higher pass rush win rate than Dallas Turner, and his run defense grade was higher than both Jared Verse and Dallas Turner, which is something on this defensive line which would uh, serve him well because we all know even when this defensive line wasn't always so great last year, to their credit, they did stop the run. So with Chop Robinson, I just see him as on a defensive line, which I think will be good anyway, whether they get him or not. Doesn't necessarily have to star right away, but if he does, if he if he plays like limited amount of snaps, he's a guy that you could maybe see as the future actual book and edge rusher. If I were to go a second guy, I chose Braylon Trice, who I think is a little bit of the opposite of Chop. Not an athletic freak, not really a high ceiling guy, but with him, he was he was very productive. He had a bunch of hurries. He had more hurries last season, quarterback hurries, than Jared Verse and Dallas Turner. 16 sacks, 23 tackles for loss in the last two seasons combined. He's a guy to me that you know, he's at the end of the second round, early of the third round for a reason, but could just be that guy who gets five or six sacks a season for five to seven years. You kind of know what you have in him, but he doesn't have the upside. I think either of those type of players would fit in very well on this particular defensive line. Yeah, that, that's a good point at the end. And I, for some reason, I know Chop gets a lot of hate, and he's not my favorite player in the draft, right. but the reason he's worth considering is that ceiling. It's that upside. Yeah. He has all the athletic traits you could yeah. dream of. Like, like, literally, you could. he probably has the highest ceiling in this entire draft. Mm. I don't know if he – even if he came out last year, I don't know if you want him on that team. Like, well, they could use any pass rush right, last right. year. <laughs> but you might not draft him on that team because it wasn't a complete defensive line. You fill out that defensive line. You, you have Davenport in Houston. Like, like, he's not required to come in and be that every down – edge rusher just come in and help refine his skills you take him in the first round that means you get that fifth year contract on a guy like this where you know there's going to be some development in it so the floor is low like he could flop and be a big time flop but that ceiling's as high as anyone in the entire draft i've got a bit of what could be considered a hot ish take if chop robinson comes to these detroit lions I could see him having not quite the same because people forget how great this uh -oh. guy was what you about to say a uh James Houston like okay. flash and, and not even flash in the pan yeah, like uh, plays limited snaps but when he gets out there he his like sack to snaps played ratio will be one of the highest in the NFL difference maker I, yeah, an, an absolute yeah. difference maker because he's I mean if we're just being honest he's more I athletic than even Aiden Hutchinson yeah he is mm -hmm. He well, just had doubt. he just had not he didn't have the uh, production or the or the technique or the kind of perceived uh football IQ and everything that Aiden Hutchinson did because all of that was off the charts. But that's why on this defensive line, I think it would be a good idea for the Lions to consider taking the high upside pick because even if he does flop, it's not the worst thing in the world, especially at 29. But if he does succeed, oh boy. Oh, watch out. We're talking mm -hmm. about a damn good pass rush. Yeah. Last thing I'll add, one little detail that I do like about the prospects of Chop. And it's also, you could use it against me as why did he not produce in college? But he got to go up against Olu Fashanu every day yeah, in practice. Yeah. Like, he's preparing against an NFL offensive line, NFL offensive line men, uh, tackles. So he shouldn't, it shouldn't take him as long to adjust to the NFL speed when he gets there. Yeah. He still has a lot to work on. But, like, that speed is a big part. When you're a, a dominant, he wasn't a dominant college defensive lineman, but good defensive lineman in college, the, the biggest thing they need to adjust to is the speed and the strength of NFL players. He got to go up against Vashanu hey. every day. And and just really quickly, I got to give Eduardo O'Neal a shout out because I've given this sort of soft comp before of Chop Robinson's trajectory could end up being like Trayvon Walker's. Although it's different. Trayvon Walker was the uh, number one overall pick. And so Ed Eduardo O'Neal says, so Trayvon Walker, I mean, Trayvon Walker was another one who uh, didn't have a ton of college sack production. I, 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 I will just say that because there's more to playing the edge position than sacks. But he got to benefit to, co to uh, coming to a defensive line that already had Josh Allen. And then last year, he kind of became that perfect book and rush where Josh Allen had 17 and Trayvon Walker had 10. So... I could definitely see a pathway for Chop Robinson that is somewhat similar to Trayvon Walker. What about Chase Young? Ooh. Mm. You know, like, like, and Chase Young's downside, it, he maybe takes some plays off. Like, you're not getting as much production as maybe you could, but talk about an athletic freak. I don't yeah. Know, we use that term a lot, but the, what else do you want to say? <laughs> yeah. He's insane. Although, He's a monster. Although Chase Young. I'm not even kidding when I say right. this, and I know we're way over. He may have been <laughs> the best defensive edge player 
rush prospect I've ever seen in terms of size, speed, production, yeah. and all of that was yeah. just an absolute freak. Unfortunately for him, his career hasn't quite panned out the way that he can. It, it, it's it's like very similar to like Jadavion Clowney. Has had a lot of success, but they were two of the biggest freaks of nature coming out in the drafts, and they've had. Very good, but not great careers so far. Yep, and shout out to Robert Stevens in the chat. He said, with the coaches in Detroit, I see more players developing in Detroit than I can ever Boom. imagine. Yep. And That's he's true. a fan from the 70s. And that, that was my point. You know, there's a, a couple other players that might be decent value picks based on what the Detroit Lions coaches and schemes can do, especially yeah. adding a Terrell Williams to this thing. And guys like Chris Braswell, Miles Cole, who's 6'6", 278, still has a lot of technique to learn. But when you have guys like this in your coaching staff, it probably makes you feel a little bit more uh, apt to say, you know what, we can actually take that chance on these types of players. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you mentioned uh, Mason Cole. He's a guy who probably won't go to the later rounds. And yeah. at that point, what's the harm in, in just, you know, throwing a flyer? It just throwing a yeah. flyer. I, I'm hoping that they actually do something like that. I, I'm not against at all the Detroit Lions saying, you know what, let's just throw another one there and there on defense and see how this thing works out, especially yeah. – Six foot six, 278 pounds, man. Yeah. Cole. Oh, I, I just, I know that Brad Holmes is not necessarily the numbers and the measurable guy from the combine, but when you look at that type of stuff and you look at uh, kind of what Terrell Williams was able to do uh, throughout his career, I'm just like, you know what? I wouldn't mind seeing it. I hey, can't wait to see what Terrell Williams does with this defensive line. Mm -hmm. We could, mm -hmm. and, and I know we, we talk about it a lot, but with the upgrade in talent, with the improvements from the, the, uh, perceived improvements from guys like Aiden Hutchinson and Ali McNeil or presumed improvements, this defensive line, it yeah. could actually be one of the best in the league. Hey, Isn't you know that what? crazy to say about it, this Detroit Lions team? It's, not at all. Uh, now, uh, now, no. Like, I'm, I'm starting to get to the point where in the juxtaposition of Lions history, yes, but with this yeah. organization, I'm actually starting to expect excellence. I'm just more speaking to what it was even at some yeah. points last year and That's certainly true. the year before. Yeah. 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 It's, it's it, how far they've come. Yeah. It's incredible. It, it's incredible, man. This defense. It's almost as if they went to Guardian Alarm. Bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that can offer you customized solutions from real experts. Our professional technicians, they take the time to recommend security and automation solutions specific to your needs. It's 24 7 professional monitoring call us anytime day or night and know that a guardian team member will stay on the phone with you as long as needed it is technology backed by people your safety and security it deserves technology that's been proven to work and people have been proven to care call 1-800 stay, stay out. out once again that number is 1-800 stay, stay out Come to any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week, walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore, it should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week, walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men, it's wicked awesome. We don't like to brag that we are the toughest sports network in Detroit. But we do have a guy named Darren McCarty on our side. Woodward Sports. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. Visit Dispo Dispensary on the coveted 420 holiday and experience a team that curates an unbelievable atmosphere mixed with fresh inventory from Michigan's largest variety of products. Dispo is putting on epic events at each location with thousands upon thousands of giveaways that day. That's right, thousands of giveaways. Go visit your local cannabis plug, Dispo Dispensary, DispoShops.com. And I'll tell you what. After you smoke what you got at Dispo, you've got the munchies, of course. <laughs> and, of course, you go to Shake Shack. Job, when it comes Sam. to chicken sa sandwiches, I have got the sleeper. It's the Shake Shack Chicken Shack Sandwich. Try the Chicken Shack Sandwich for free with a $10 purchase. Grab a shake and a crispy creakle fry, and your Chicken Shack will be free. Just use the code word Woodward in person, online, or download the Shake Shack app today. Promotion available in all seven Michigan Metro Detroit locations. What up, though, people? Welcome back to Wake Up Woodward. Man, it's been an epic show today. As always, chat family, you guys have been a big 
reason why. We appreciate the support all the time. We appreciate you guys in the chat as well. Start to get your mailbag questions ready. Start to get who you want. Who are your two? Yeah. Who are your two edge rushers that you're looking at in this draft? Not name Dallas Turner, Jared Verse, or Latu Latu. Yeah. I want to be able to see where the fans' minds are as well. Oh, yeah. There's a, there's certainly plenty of them that could go in that potential 29 to 61 range. I mean, including your guy, Chris Braswell, my guy, Chop Robinson, Darius. I mean, I could go on and on and on, but... uh. I think at some point in this draft, uh, Brad Holmes is going to get an edge rusher. Yeah, and it's really cool, too, to see the Chat family yeah. being able to talk about this Detroit Lions coaching yeah. staff. Oh, yeah. Like it, We're sitting here, and we're able to make a big deal about it because the Lions have gone out there and given us the, the ability to. Oh, yeah. When you look at their, their offseason, we've talked about this. This coaching staff, they are not afraid at all, not afraid at all, at all to make the right decisions, whether it's their friends that they're like, you know what, I thought he could do the job. Shout out to Broder. He has to run downtown to get to Allen Park uh, for some Lions business today. Oh, man. yeah. So shout out to our brother. He just took off there, guys. Definitely uh, put some likes on the chat for Mr. Matthew Broder, our credential Detroit Lions be writing reporter. But they've shown that they're willing to make the tough decisions. They're, they've shown they're willing to make the right decisions. Uh, and when that Tennessee Titans staff became kind of available after yeah. the head coach was asked. They jumped on it right away. Oh, yeah. They were just like, you know, John Scott Jr., Tyrell, Tyrell Williams. Yep. And, hey, and they did the same thing. One of the early pivotal decisions of the upward trajectory of this franchise, putting a uh, – what 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 you would call a professional bullet in Anthony Lynn yeah. and uh, <laughs> quick yeah hey but it was the right move and because it was look, homeboy too. look who came after after him Ben Johnson was yep. elevated to passing game coordinator next year was elevated to offensive coordinator and the rest is history he's considered by many including myself to be the best offensive coordinator in the league and under Anthony Lynn this offense looked absolutely dormant it wasn't as talented granted but yeah. it looked bad but yep. Dan Campbell wasn't afraid to make the decision it wasn't working. He's my friend. I don't care. Out. Out. That's what you mm -hmm. need, though, from leadership. Stay, stay out. out. Yes. Man, and I absolutely love that. You're right, man. From leadership. Yes. From the top down, this organization is just doing things differently. Yep. Hoping some of our other organizations in the city can take apt note. And once again, people, I'm going to remind you, the NFL draft is just nine days away. Ooh. Nine. Nine. Count on one, two, three, four. If six, seven, eight, nine <laughs> days away. And I'm ecstatic. We want to see you guys downtown celebrating with us continue to stay tapped in we will have all the full details and there's a very specific reason just beyond the detroit lions that you want to tap into this broadcast and that's because something tells me we're going to get long drink flannel again oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. He's that was an appearance I'll tell you what, though, <laughs> this, these are a little bit different circumstances because this is the night before and, you know, 5 a.m. <laughs> comes quickly the, the, the next morning. So I might have like one or two. But last year, it's an experience. last year with like all of the uh, draft coverage, I know for that entire weekend, I barely slept at all, but it was still so much fun. Yeah. Hey, dope. It's team building. It's what it is. It is. Yeah. I can't wait, man. It's going to be epic, man. What were you saying, KG, about long drink flannel? Oh, he's going to make an appearance. Oh, yeah. one, or, one or two is all it takes. So <laughs> He needs to make an appearance. Hey, shout out long drink flannel was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, long drink shout, out long, it done. shout out long drink, by the way, because it was uh, one of our sponsors. I first tried them when I went to, uh, oh, man, what was that golf? simulator sponsor that we once had. Oh, oh five, uh, iron. Five, iron. five iron. Five iron, yes, yes. In the Cambria Hotel. Oh, yeah, yep, yeah. I remember that. Went, went to a couple of those uh, Woodward Golf event outings, and, you know, Brady and Griffin hooked me up with some free long drink, and I'm like, where's this been my whole life? Yeah, yeah. It's hey. a genuinely phenomenal drink. I'm not just saying that, that because they're a sponsor. I wish I would have known about it during my college days. At the Bullseye Event Group, the tailgate. Oh, yeah. The Lions official Safe, VIP. Yep, it, absolutely. It was, it was uh, people were definitely enjoying them. Yes, the tailgate. Everybody was trouble. walking around looking like long drink flannel. <laughs> <laughs> those events but i think it's time for the most electrifying segment in sports entertainment if you smell what jb smooth is cooking with what's trending jay bizzle let's go <laughs> hey what's up fellas yeah. what's i love the lions here man i do i do no. i love the lions here today speaking of the lions as you just said the draft is what only nine days away and you know what i'm so pumped for this that it all starts on day one, as the Lions just told us. Good morning. Back. Back to the field. Year four. All season, four rounds. I started like 
when the season ended. <laughs> Ooh, talk, uh-huh. talk that talk. Hey, hey, let's go. Hey, hey, hey. Look at Jericho, forever lifting, never gaining. Mo. Super Bowl aspirations. Hey, they got goals. Hey, Robertson. You love to see it. Oh, man. You love to see Day it. Day one. What are you guys thinking right now? What do you mean? What am I thinking? <laughs> I'm putting the chain on right now. Oh, my gosh. Man, start the season today. Yes. Oh, yeah. Can we get to September already? Oh, I man. know. Man. Let's. Oh, man. I'm pumped up, man. The last couple days have made me extremely excited for Detroit Lions football, even more so. It speaks a lot that they're all there. And some of the guys that you think are going to be the most prominent players on this Detroit Lions team are there getting their yeah. early, early, early workouts in. Hopefully they feel motivated and they feel hunger after that NFC Championship oh game disappointment. Gosh. Hey, you I'll say more. this. They should be happy about where the, the – I hope that they are proud of what they accomplished this last season, but they're even more hungry about what they weren't able to accomplish in the NFC Championship, and that hopefully they make sure this never happens again. And shout out, by the way, this version of the Detroit Lions has almost single-handedly changed my mind about the value and the importance of culture in an NFL what? locker room. What? I used, oh. hey, hey, I used to think that it was something that was way overblown, but as you see... As you see Brad Holmes making some moves both in the draft and even the moves he didn't make at the trade deadline this past year, everything that he has done so far has worked out like swimmingly. And all of the players, <laughs> all of the players that he's gotten, guys like Aiden Hutchinson, guys like Amon Ra, guys like Panay or Brian Branch and countless mm. others. It's not just that they're very talented, phenomenal football players. It's that they are high character, hardworking guys that you never have to worry about uh, loafing or getting complacent or or during contract years holding out or anything like that and it's 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 a testament to how they built this team the coaching staff and all of that so a shout out to the lions and shout out to all of them being there on voluntary workouts you gotta love it good I love job it. I absolutely yeah. love it hey i know you got more what's trending and we'll get through it but did you see what i said <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give, give oh me a my second. gosh bro <laughs> i can... all right let's get through what's trending Debbie's already killing. It's already crushing. Uh, yeah, I, I got that video coming up. It, it's something special. But <laughs> I, I got to show you guys this because you know what? Some of you all don't know how to box out properly. So let, let me show you how to box out properly. You got to box out, okay? You got to box out until you get the ball. <laughs> sure. Keep boxing out until you get it. Boxing out, you get it. <laughs> Spice Adams again. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Hey, Detroit's on. Oh, look, look at that! Look no, the pass. No, the pass. You didn't even see it coming. That pass was crazy. You didn't even see it coming. Look. Hey, that sounds like a season. Hey, you know what? Hey, Got to be ready. Got got to be ready for the pass at all times. Uh, at all times, you got to be ready for the pass. Hey, former Chicago Bear, but always, always a native here, man. <laughs> always, man. Spice Adams, dog. <laughs> Cream Biggs, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It was a time where he absolutely had kind of sports social media world on lock, man. Oh yeah. yeah. His Chick Fil A song is still epic. If y'all haven't seen it. Y'all got to check out uh, Spice Adams' Chick-fil-A song. He made a name for him, more of a name for himself than he ever did on the field. Yep. Yeah. S- yep. Some, s- sometimes it got to be that way. Yeah. Shout out to him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hold on. <laughs> Our Van- Vandalay says Spice Adams is every guy over 40 playing hoops at Lifetime Fitness. I swear. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's the truth. <laughs> Not wrong. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. Sometimes when you play pickup basketball, you'll get this, like, older guy who you think, oh, not not to worry about and him, he but he's the most fundamentally yeah, he's right. like the most fundamentally sound guy on the court, has the dad strength and everything, and you're right. just like, Oh damn, yeah. I'm getting my ass kicked. Did you so, talk to him after the game? He was like, Yeah, I could have played in the NBA, but I had kids or something then, like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Chef's talk too. Burnt the roof of my mouth. <laughs> hey, I'm telling y'all, check out that uh check out the Chick-fil-A song. 
Check <laughs> check out that Chick Fil A song. And lastly, I gotta play you guys this. So it's Kool Aid. I don't even know what league this is, so you're gonna have to help me out. <laughs> Let's go. What? Get, get what? Wait, what? So someone said in the comments, they this played was on like, six foot ribs. Is this adults versus like kids? Somebody said this is like the. 15 and under league? Why are the rims like? Them kids ain't 15, newsflash. <laughs> are the rims short? No, the opposing team is just all short. It <laughs> 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 don't make no sense. Like, I, what is happening here? <laughs> Damn. I'm, no, it's taking me a couple seconds to just sit here like, yo, are they just playing on shorter rims or are they them just playing 15. a team of little people? What is going on? I could have been in the league. Yeah. That man is in the G League <laughs> right now. It was not 15 year old. Goodness. They open the shit. They throw hey, an alley oop. What is happening <laughs> right now? <laughs> you know what, dog? You, it's like with those types of games, too. What do you even tell your team? Because you want to coach perseverance. You want to coach, you know, hey, guys, it doesn't matter. The challenge ahead of us. What do you tell your team? You know what this kind of reminds me of? It reminds me of watching uh, Zion Williamson high school highlights because I'm pretty sure that he just went to a high school in South Carolina. He never went to like the Oak Hill Academies or anything like that. And you just see him just being a man amongst boys out there. And yeah. if your job is to guard him that night and you're just like a regular high school basketball player in South Carolina, you're just like, I'm effed, I'm done. <laughs> like, the thing about high school basketball is if you just go to a regular high school that's not like a basketball powerhouse or anything yeah. like that, most of the time, even for a good stretch, you won't have guys who can even dunk. You won't have guys yeah. who will even go to play college ball. So... When you get guys even like that, it's really not outside the realm of possibility that there will be people 15 and under a, 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 a certain very rare case of very dominant, <laughs> very oversized versus regular size 15-year-olds. No, I'm going to uh, check that other team's coach immediately. That's like, fair. Kids is <laughs> that, not is, 15. that is fair. Oh, man. Goodness gracious. We'll pull that older, lighter argument. <laughs> <laughs> I know the game. <laughs> I know the game. Oh goodness gracious, man! Oh man, but you guys ready for this one? Is it the video? Yep. Hey, listen, this is the best. Hey, Eduardo O'Neill, shout, shout out, out to shout out. you. Shout out to you. that was fast too. It was something I said at the beginning of the show, and it's here. Oh, and Eduardo look at me. cooking. <laughs> Let's go. Let's run it. Hey! Hey! Let's, hey, go. Hey, 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 let's go! Get him turned, Sam! With the, hey, yo, with the turnt, sleeveless Sam. flannel! Let's go! Okay. Hey! 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 Look at the flannel, bro! That's laundry flannel right there! I'm telling yeah, you, that you that is laundry flannel! Hey! I would pay so much money to see flannel do this! Hey! Not even joking! Hey, you know oh, what? Oh man, that was nice. Hey, Take my turn money up if you Sam, Steve do Young. Hey, um, let's go. I mean, I was an approximation of that on the uh, stage at the yeah. at, at, at uh, opening day yeah, at times. <laughs> I heard I heard a couple of my songs come on. I just like raced up there, and we had a bunch of. It, it was a lot of fun. Hey, yeah. we, I see some long drink flannels in the chat, man. <laughs> long live long drink flannel. <laughs> and where that's Sam after Hutch wins the MVP. Yeah, yeah no, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> hey. If the Red Wings make the playoffs. Oh, yeah, for sure. You got to sure. do that on the show yourself. If the, oh, yeah. <laughs> if the Lions and the Chiefs make the Super Bowl. Hey! hey. 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 And yes, I would root for the Lions, so you can stop that all right now. I know you're Better. not going to. Yeah, they're but. asking, will Flannel do that? I, you guys aren't privy to Flannel's uh, dance escapades? No, nah, he get we out got some. We got some epic videos, but you know what? What was that? Wasn't I here for the Christmas party? Yeah. He was going. Oh, cool. yeah. He was going ham. I was. Going ham. I, I look at that video and now I'm like, hmm, which was better? <laughs> which was better? Well, how do you rank those, man? I mean, I need the stats. I mean, the, I the, 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 the AI version was uh, definitely better. <laughs> but here's the thing, man. <laughs> and I've always said this, and I will give this to all single people in the chat. I wish Broder were here. Yeah. If you're going out and you have a few drinks, just be a willing dancer. Don't be that guy that's like too cool, just standing in the corner with your beer holding like this. Get out there and dance. And that's coming hey. from Sam. It does wonders. Hey. Let's go. I like that, man. Cause I like that. Because whether Respect. you win or lose, whether you get the girl or you don't, you'll still have fun. And nobody really cares. Nobody's actually looking at you, judging you. Everyone's just having fun. Just have fun. 
Hey, let me see this. Like you made that comment. I had that video in five minutes. I got you, bro. Shout out to it. <laughs> Shout out to it, Shout out, man. <laughs> Yeah, that video yeah. ready to go. Oh, it's like, look, we tried to speak it into existence to have Lucas Raymond walk in, but obviously he has to make sure he's on his way to Montreal. Yeah. But instead, we spoke the video into existence, and that was epic, man. That oh, was yeah. epic. Yo, it looked like the people love it, too. I I'm seeing a bunch of laugh emojis. Kyle Stark, <laughs> Eduardo O'Neal. Uh, let me see. Oh, LFG, Lions Chief Super Bowl. Oh, my gosh, man. That was epic. That was epic. What a was trending today, JB. Oh, yeah. Thank you, JB. <laughs> what a was trending today. Not a problem, you guys. Uh, we do have some business to take care of, though. Hey. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Sam, why don't you get on with the QB channel? Absolutely. How would you like to win two free tickets to this season's football home opener? It's the Shake Shack QB Challenge, and it's this Friday, making it your last chance to register for the event. If you can throw it on a rope, you could be at the home opener. Register today for your chance to win at any Shake Shack location or scan the QR code on the screen right there. And you know what? <laughs> yeah, it's sticking the background back there. <laughs> <laughs> you can't forget about Soroki Nashville Hot Chicken. <laughs> so Featuring sick. Nashville Hot Chicken Tenders. We got the hot chicken sandwich. You also got the loaded chicken <laughs> fries. And we can't forget about the Nashville Hot Pizza as well. <laughs> they are only here for a limited time, so you have to go to a local Soroki's and pick them out right now. Visit them online at Soroki's.com to place your order online or always check out one of their 11 convenient hey. locations as well, too. But, uh, Sam, one more time. I think you got to tell them about a car you can get from Les Stanford. Absolutely. Well, so you can drive the Sorokis. Hey, what happens hey. when you run a great business for over 50 years? You expand and offer more products to more people. This is exactly what Les Stanford did by adding Les Stanford Buick GMC, the same great service that customers have come to know and trust. On Woodward Avenue, just south of Nine Mile, Check out Les Stanford and Dearborn today at lesstanford.com. Les Stanford Chevrolet together. Let's drive. Let's drive. Let's drive right down Woodward Chat family. As always, we appreciate you guys for supporting the crew. We got a few more minutes here. Get in your mailbag questions. I also want to know who are some of these edge rushers in this draft, not named Jared Verse, not named Dallas Turner, not named Latu Latu, that you are hoping these Detroit Lions uh, draft. And you know what, KG, while they're getting their, um, their mailbag questions in, I want to hear from you as it relates to some of the edge rushers. Whether we mentioned them already or not, yeah. I just want to kind of hear your spin on uh, edge rushers that interest you in this draft, either value picks, guys that you can see in the third round, yeah. or even players that you think might be available at 29 for the Detroit Lions. Well, I've been on Chop about as long as Sam has. Uh, I'm big, chop, big on Chop Robinson. I like his potential a lot, but I also like Marshawn Breland as well. So I'd be cool with any of those if they decide to stay put. But if you decide to move up, I, I need you to get quality. So that that would be a Dallas Turner or Jared verse. But if they stick at 29, I'm cool with Chopper either Marshawn Breland in that spot. Hey, dope, dope, dope. And anything else just from a draft strategy that you're looking for out of the Detroit Lions, man? We are nine days away. Like I said, I just really want them to trade up, man. Whether that be for an edge rusher or a corner, I feel like those are the two key posi positions on defense that can really elevate this and move this more you know along so i would like to see them do that but if they don't it is what it is i trust brad and i know he'll come out and and uh get us some dogs man so, very nice some I, dogs. hey yeah. hey i found a mailbag big big con 51 mailbag if chop gets drafted by the lions will sam be a bigger aiden or chop simp aiden aiden, <laughs> aiden, <laughs> aiden hutchinson is my favorite football player on planet earth oh F man hope, like you know hard stop so and you guys probably have either known that or could imply that by just watching watching the shows I'm on. Let's go. Let's go. Chase Amley, Woodward Pistons, I really want us to draft Braylon Allen in the third round. How does that sound to you? Given the fact that the Lions in some ways have a dire needless draft, if that makes sense, if it's a luxury pick, I don't necessarily hate it. If uh, they're with, with David Montgomery, he's not going to be here forever. It's not my first choice, but I'm not going to yell and scream or anything like that. I like Braylon Hallen a lot as a, as a uh, draft prospect, so yeah. don't, don't hate it. <laughs> Shout out to Xavier D. If stick is your boss, you won. Yes. That's fair. Yes, I agree it's with that. Fair. Shout out Factual. to stick. Shout out to stick. Hey, Eduardo O'Neill mailbag. I think it's more of a statement. He said, I think the best thing about this culture is you can tell these players really love ball. Aleem, Amon Ra, they could have sat at home for these, and they showed up even though they have only one year left and I, and that yep. says it relates to the uh, involuntary uh, 
workouts. Absolutely. Yeah. As I was saying before, Aleem, Aleem, guys like Aleem McNeil and Amon Ra St. Brown, they're phenomenal football players, and I expect them to have great years, especially Amon Ra coming off an all-pro season, first-team all-pro. But it's the fact that you never have to worry about their commitment to the game or anything like that. As, as Edward O'Neill said, the extension for Amon Ra has not happened yet. We think that it will, but mm. he's not saying, I'm skipping workouts until it happens. He's right there with his teammates. So a uh, shout, yep. shout out to this culture and a uh, shout out to the Lions organization. A hey, shout out to IT Hips as well. If we want to uh, kind of stay right there on the Amon Ra St. Brown contract, uh, he said, Will St. Brown get at least $30 million a year now after the Devontae Smith contract extension? <sighs> Devontae Smith got 25 a year. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I mean, yeah. I'm not opposed to it. Would I prefer the number to be in the high 20s? Sure, but you can't really complain about a contract involving first-team All-Pro Amon Ross St. Brown. So if it's yeah. 30 million, it's 30 million. KG, what's good, brother? Same. Me and Sam is in locks to pay that man whatever he yeah. wants. But yeah. I do think it will be somewhere between 27 to 28 million a year. So. I, th that'd be perfect. Yeah. Yeah, especially if these guys look, they know that they can go probably elsewhere and get some paydays, some 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 pretty big paydays. They've earned that right. But when you look at what this team is trying to do right now, the cusp of being oh, right there, man, with yep. an opportunity to play for the Super Bowl and understanding that everybody on this squad is locked in for that this coming season, that's worth something. That's mm -hmm. worth something. Yep. So even if he knows he could probably command 30-plus, even if Jared Goff knows he could probably command a pretty hefty contract, especially given what other quarterbacks in the coming years are probably going to have, I am hoping and I do believe that these players, they're thinking about the big picture overall and the fact that they get to do something, they have the potential to do something very, very special. And I think if you do that in Detroit, it is twice as special. You oh, yeah. go down in the annals of not just Detroit history, but football history, period, yep. of having lifted this franchise – to the ultimate goal, oh. goodness gracious, bro. We forget because of how quickly it's changed, but the Lions, for the better part of the entire Super Bowl era, besides for last year and the year before, were arguably the worst franchise in American professional team sports. Yeah. And, but so, Man. like, the point is, is the fact that they've elevated so far in just a couple of years, the fact that they could – they are one of these Super Bowl favorites going into next year. The amount of acclaim that they will get in terms of just, like, NFL lore, in terms of Detroit lore, it's something that you couldn't get anywhere else. Lifting the Lions? Yeah. That's like a that, – that, that, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's a miracle. Yeah, automatic Hall of Fame. That's a miracle. What did you say, KG? Automatic Hall of Fame for whoever can get that done. So. Yep. Yeah. Hey, you know, we got one uh, – let me see. We got a couple more mailbags. I'll, I'll read Steve DeYoung mailbag. Chop Robinson or Darius Robinson at 29? Chop. Yeah, Chop. Then he uh, says Johnny Newton or Brian Murphy in the mid-20s. Byron Murphy. And in the second, getting Marshawn Nealon or Braden Trice in the second round. Marshawn, Marshawn Nealon. Yeah. All right. All right. And this one's for, uh, where to go? JB and KG via Silky Johnson. He said, Mel bag for JB hey, and hey, KG. Hey, hey. Can Logan Paul become the next Eddie Guerrero type bad boy in WWE or am I just crazy? I'll let JB go first with that one. Eddie Guerrero? Yeah, that's a little strong. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little strong. I don't think I would compare Logan Paul to an Eddie Guerrero. I mean, you can take aspects from Eddie's career and try to be that bad guy. Maybe more like a Scott Hall? Yeah. If, if anything. Like, I, I just can't see an Eddie Guerrero out of Logan Paul. That I, just doesn't seem like him. I think Logan Paul is his own unique entity because he kind of came in already being like a douchebag type, you know, yeah. streaming, YouTube streamer, character. Um, and he's he's really good in the ring. All respect to him. He came in, he took it seriously, and he's very good in the ring, like way better than I ever expected. Uh, um, yeah. But Eddie Guerrero, that's strong, man. You look at Cruiserweight Eddie, Latino Heat Eddie, and then La Cheating Steel Eddie. That's different <laughs> yeah, yeah, levels yeah. of like, uh, uh, like heel, man. But, um, yeah, Logan Paul's doing a great job just being who he is. I was going to ask you guys, man. You guys are wrestling aficionados. I've been getting back into it since SummerSlam last year. Logan Paul, like, is it wrong of me that I actually 
like what he's bringing to the table? Not at all. No. Man, he's surprised me. No, nah, he, he's he's come me. in. He's already wrestled a championship match against Roman Reigns. He he hung with Rey Mysterio. Like he's he's had some notable matches and he's performed well in damn near all of them, man. And he's he's becoming a mainstay in WWE. And if it, this is what he wants to do, all power to him, man. Like I said, he came in, he took it seriously, and and he's reaping the benefits. Yeah, and just one more wrestling one before we uh, wrap up here. From Jordan Schaefer, did JB or KG make it to SmackDown last Friday? I know you talked about it a little bit, KG. Yeah, yesterday, yeah. So, uh, yeah. no, it, it was great, man. We was there, uh, got to see Solo maybe officially taking over the bloodline, so that was significant. <laughs> we sold the place out. Um, you know how Detroit do. We always show out whenever they come to town. So, no, it was a good show, man. Looking forward to the next one. Hopefully it's a PLE. Yeah, hopefully it's a PLE because I need to go to the next one. That's for sure. Big but, facts. Yeah, I wasn't in the building for SmackDown, so I just had to watch it at home. But it was still a good show. Oh, man. Hey, Chef, I just saw that. You know what? We gonna... <laughs> I see it, Chef. You want to play it back again on the way out? <laughs> we're going to play Flannels tomorrow. We might have to play a new one, too. Wait, what? Uh, Chef's talk just sent the video. It's, it's pretty hilarious, too, man. Oh, anything boy, anything yeah. to put on the, uh, the chat family. This is epic. And we got to make sure that after we break it down, that we end with Flannel's video, man. That was epic. Shout out to Eduardo O'Neill for sending that in. Chat family as well. We zoomed past 100 likes. So if you haven't hit that like button already, definitely go ahead and smash it if you have. Thank you guys for doing that. And everybody who's viewing, watching, listening, whatever, thank you guys for your support so much. But it's time to break this thing down. Absolutely. Hey, let's rock, man. Let's rock. Thank you guys for choosing to kick off your day with the Wake Up Wilbur crew. Mr. Matthew Broder already had to kind of zip down. This is the second day in a row. Yesterday, I had to zip down to the Pistons Performance Center for the exit interviews. Today, Matthew Broder is zipping down to Allen Park for some Lions business that he's going to take care of as well. And I know that his week is just kind of getting started as well. Because the Lions are going to be revealing those uniforms on Thursday. Yes, sir. And we're nine days away from the NFL draft. And I cannot wait. Going to be on the desk with my guy Flannel and the rest of Woodward Sports personalities are going to be there. It's going to be an epic time. We want to meet you guys, so stay tuned to all of the full details that will be hitting the airways soon. I'm sure we're going to have some giveaways to get people in. But to our elite, our illustrious, our wonderful, our stupendous, am I doing this right? Yes. Our boom. <laughs> we got Detroit's number one draft pick, Mr. KG. And nobody. I love that. Damn right. Appreciate y'all, <laughs> man. <laughs> you ain't going to catch him smiling. You ain't going to catch him on socials, man. That's Mr. KG, but you will catch him with the Woo Crew bringing that heat. Mm -hmm. In the Thinny Booth, because it's Tuesday. Titty. Let's go! Oh <laughs> Woo Sports is MVP decked out in all Lions gear, Mr. JB Smooth. Jay Bizzle. Hey, it's been an amazing show, you guys. The draft coming up soon. That's where it all starts. It's day one. The Lions are already putting in the work, so hey. let's finish it off at the draft. The Twitterless wonder from Chef's Talk to KG. <laughs> <laughs> the vet of our squad, I'm just going to say this on air, the guy that I'm hoping becomes our credentialed Detroit Red Wings beat reporter because the guy knows his stuff. He knows all sports. But what he brings to this show as it relates to Red Wings, I am so, 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 so grateful for it. I'm a fan of the Red Wings. I know some of the other sports love basketball, but what you bring with Red Wings, thank you so much. Brother. Hey, I appreciate it. Hopefully we can have a very happy and joyous show tomorrow. And hopefully we can see some playoff hockey at Little Caesars Arena. Damn right. I will, honestly, I would probably dip into some uh, funds that I shouldn't dip in, into for some, uh, <laughs> for, some for, for, for some playoff tickets. That's what, right. that's worth it. You know what? If they make the playoffs, we will definitely put boots on the ground. Yep. We will make that. We will make that happen. Okay. One way or another. Absolutely. I have to break the hoodie out. promise that, man. Mm -mm. Goodness, that's going to be epic. Yep. Woo. And you got to get a special final for that. Okay. Definitely. All right. And it's your boy, Brandon, there, a.k.a. Detroit Kool-Aid, your credential beat writer and beat reporter for the Detroit Pistons. Thank you guys, as always, for waking up with Woodward, man. We appreciate you guys. Smash that like button on the way out. Share the stream. Thank you guys for supporting. Have a great day.